Welcome to Dwarven Forge. This is everything you need to know about our terrain in 60 seconds. Ready? Let's go. We hand sculpt our pieces for maximum detail and artistry, infusing passion into every millimeter of our work. Everything is available beautifully hand painted so you can start playing right away. Or you can choose unpainted to paint everything yourself. Our pieces are completely modular so you can use the same sets to create a new adventure every time. Most pieces have embedded anchor magnets that affix to our terrain trays for secure building and for revealing rooms as your players discover them. We create everything out of Dwarvenite, our top secret PVC formula that's nearly indestructible. We pack our pieces with as many features as possible, such as swappable LEDs to quickly change the look of your scene. We offer magnetic accessories to add flavor or increase the danger. A one-inch tactical grid is sculpted into our floors, hidden in dungeon flagstones, natural rocks, or sticks and plants. In addition to sculpted pieces, we make terrain trays to use as a vibrant graphic base for your build. We offer a range of environments, including dungeons, caverns, cities, castles, sewers, forests, mountains, streets, burrows, ice, and hellscape. And that's just the beginning. We have a passionate fan base who can tell you all about it. And that's everything you need to know about Dwarven Forge in 60 seconds. The games we play are the stories we create. The fortress doors swing open. Every story is unique. And the sound of war drums rises. Sometimes our stories come to us when we least expect them. We need to be ready no matter where inspiration strikes. And sometimes our stories are told over great distances. No matter where your journey leads you or how your story is told. The games we play are the stories we create. Sirenscape can help make yours epic. Sirenscape is searchable, fast, and customizable from any device with no need to pre-install any sound. Adding epic atmosphere to your game has never been easier. To the ones that we got Cheers to the wish you were here But you're not Cause the drinks bring back all the memories Of everything we've been through 
Toast to the ones here today. Toast to the ones that we lost on the way. Cause the drinks bring back all the memories. Memories bring back, memories bring back you. There's a time that I remember when I didn't know no pain. I believed in forever, everything would stay the same. Now my heart feels like December. Would somebody say your name? Cause I can't reach out to call you, but I know I will one day. Yeah, everybody hurts sometimes, everybody hurts someday. Hey, hey. Everything gonna be alright, gonna raise a glass and say, Here's to the ones that we got. Cheers to the wish you were here, but you're not, cause the drinks bring back all the memories of everything we've been through. Toast to the ones here today. Toast to the ones that we lost on the way, cause the drinks bring back all the memories. Memories bring back, memories bring back you. Do, 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 do. Memories bring back, memories bring back you There's a time that I remember When I never felt so lost When I felt all of the hatred Was too powerful to stop How my heart feels like an ember And it's lighting up the dark I'll carry these torches for you We'll never ever drop yeah. Everybody hurts sometimes, everybody hurts someday Everything's gonna be alright, gonna raise a glass and say Here's to the ones that we got Cheers to the wish that we hear, but you're not Cause the drinks bring back all the memories Of everything we've been through Toast to the ones here today Toast to the ones that we lost on the way Cause the drinks bring back all the memories Memories bring back, memories bring back you. Do 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 Memories bring back, memories bring back you. Do 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 Memories bring back, memories bring back you. Hi, I play Soul Cut Miguel Austin and Itari. He's a wood elf. Memories bring back, memories bring back you. Welcome to episode four of season three of Into the Mist. I am Jason Azevedo, your host. And just before we go into announcements, just want to say um, two years ago uh, this week, uh, we said goodbye to a dear friend who took his life. Um, and so we wanted to raise an awareness for suicide prevention and also wanted to dedicate this episode to him. Um, we have a game coming up uh, for Jasper's Game Day uh, in May. Uh, that is May, I wasn't prepared, May 7th, um, and uh, my stream deck's not working. <laughs> it's all good. Ha, there we go, new stream deck. Jasper's Game Day, uh, May 7th at 12 p.m. Eastern. Uh, we sold uh, $500 worth of tickets to our game, um, and we're so thankful uh, for your contributions and are looking forward to fun Day of Dungeons and Dragons to where uh, to, to raise awareness um, and actually a whole week they're doing a whole week of games so check them out at jaspersgameday.com it's very close to our hearts um, as it hits home for our stream and so all of those that are hurting out there um, if life is tough especially in this really difficult time please reach out to somebody there are people around you that care about you that love you um, and take care of yourselves I want to say a huge thank you, of course, to Dungeons and Dragons for this incredible game that they created for us to play so many, so many years ago. And here we are on stream um, playing and enjoying it with everyone here. Uh, we want to thank them for um, their awesome, 
uh, contributions to our community. I want to thank Hero Forge. Uh, they are our other main title sponsor. You can check them out at HeroForge.com. Hero Forge is an amazing online creation tool for custom miniatures. Um, you can check them out and, and create your own. All of our player character minis, including the Muskoka I just painted um, not too long ago, uh, are all Hero Forge. So we want to thank them for their ongoing support. Uh, I want to thank Sirenscape, uh, our other main title sponsor. They have an incredible online sound set and media player to add um, ambiance and sound effects to your game experience. We use that here at Realmsmith um, for all of our um, sound effect needs and desires. And I don't know why Sirenscape isn't on right now. Speaking of which, there we are. Perfect. Want to thank Beetle and Grimm, our other title sponsor. Uh, they have make incredible D&D boxes, premium boxes for your D&D home game experience. Um, we use a lot of their stuff here for our Curse of Strahd game. They have a limited edition of Curse of Strahd that is out currently um, and is available. It's sold out, but my understanding is they have printed more and they are, will be releasing soon. And we will be giving away more legendary editions of Curse of Strahd in the coming uh, season. Um, this label here is just one of the really super cool things. Not the bottle, but the label. Uh, it is Purple Grape Mash number three. Uh, that is just a cool thing that comes in the box. It's awesome. It's huge. Um, and um, the experience and what they do is amazing. They just they play D&D &D and look at D&D &D the same way that we do. Um, and we thank them so much for their ongoing support. I want to thank our product sponsors, WizKids, for a lot of the minis and terrain that we use uh, on our channel. Um, we want to thank Dwarven Forge for a lot of the terrain as well. Uh, Mithril Armory is currently uh, sponsoring our natural 20 rolls. And so every time somebody rolls a natural 20, you will see a graphic that appears on the screen um, to denote that they are launching their Stoneheart dice set. It is like a jewelry-esque high-end premium dice made of precious metals. You can check that out at stoneheart.ca and you'll get more information on when that will actually uh, launch in the near future. Uh, D&D Beyond, uh, we are officially powered by them. All of our character sheets, all of our encounters are run through D&D Beyond. And tonight we are giving away a pre-order version of Van Richten's Guide uh, to uh, Ravenloft all you have to do is in the chat on YouTube specifically and exclusively, only once, more than once you will be disqualified, is enter the word Ravenloft. If you enter the word Ravenloft, you'll be entered into the giveaway and then you will receive a pre-order uh, for that guide. When it comes out in May, you'll get that guide um, and that is the digital copy for your D&D Beyond experience. Quick note. If you think you can survive Barovia, our Discord has exploded through our Patreon. Um, basically, the way that it works is we have an online role-playing server that you can be involved in. You can role-play with your characters, you can search for items, uh, you can go on quests, and you can also now just recently DM random encounters and modules for our community. You can check that out at Patreon at patreon.com slash realmsmith. Um, it has grown in leaps and bounds. Uh, I'll just show you here. This is the map of Gakis that continues to grow on a weekly basis. Um, each one of those tents and vardos represent a Vistani character in our uh, Discord, um, and it just continues to explode and grow um, in leaps and bounds. And we are so thankful for your support. Check it out at patreon.com. That's one great way to support us. Another great way to support us is merch. We have t-shirts, hoodies, phone cases, all that kind of stuff. Um, we recently, recently, last month, I think it was, released our Can I Touch It? Uh, Oregon shirt and uh, the Exploding Vardo, sh uh, Vardo shirt. Uh, you guys can check those out uh, just below the video, both on Twitch and on YouTube. And then this Thursday, hosted by our own Hillary Z herself, is Aftermath. That is Thursdays at 8 p.m. That is when some of the cast come together and give you a bit of a behind the scenes look at everything that happens at Realmsmith. Um, and it is kind of a um, really kind of casual, fun chat about experiences. Last session, Dave actually posted t uh, today a video uh, cut of uh, our goat conversation uh, and where my head was at when he said I was going to talk to a goat. Uh, and then had to come up with that. So if you're interested in kind of finding out what happens behind the scenes here at Realm Smith, um, Aftermath is the show for you. I think that is all the announcements for today. Um, I hope you guys are excited. It is 
super, super interesting to see how Muskoka is going to get out of the predicament he has somehow found himself in again. <laughs> Without further ado, let's venture into the mists. All right. Oh, natural 20 off the top. <laughs> yeah. The bat. Woo. Yes. That's not true. That isn't what was supposed to happen. We'll take it. Welcome, guys. How you doing? Super. Super. Yeah. <laughs> that wasn't so great. Uh, are you guys concerned? I know that we're back in lockdown here in Ontario, Canada. Um, full lockdown, like stay at home oh, order no. and all the rest. Really? Oh, no. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for at least for a month. So we'll see how that goes. But numbers went high. So here we are doing our thing. Turns out Ontarians are more contagious than the rest of the world. And Canadians so. are very um, affectionate people. So that's, <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's we just, very generous. Yeah, very, very <laughs> generous. To, yeah. Yeah. Hard to keep our hands off each other. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's taking a little far. Um, sorry. <laughs> Welcome, guys. Last we left you, you were in the marshes of Berez. Um, you were currently looking for a silver dragon skull of Argenvost, who you were told is in the possession of Babala Saga. Babala Saga being a hag of ancient age and power. Um, you came here looking for her, and uh, instead, what you found uh, was a woman by the name of Muriel who told you all the history of what happened um, with um, Berez and and, and Babala Sagan, a bit of information there. Um, and then you headed to the goat pen that you found out that Babala Sagan potentially uses as a food source, not quite sure. Um, Muskoka, in his wonderful wisdom, um, wanted to free these goats because really he had hoped that they maybe would lead you all to uh, Babala Saiga. Um, but unfortunately that turned awry as the skulls that uh, atop the pen began to scream in this loud ruckus signal um, alarm system, as it were. Um, alerting a number of scarecrows to your current position. As you waited, uh, and as Muskoka made a new friend, who then ran off, um, who the community has affectionately named uh, Noggins, um, <laughs> you all are now finding yourselves surrounded by Scarecrow, Sterling and Muskoka frightened Muskoka once again finding himself separated from the group and uh, effectively paralyzed uh, Is, by the terrifying gaze of the Scarecrows. Quick question, Jay. Sure. From our perspective, can we tell if this Scarecrow uh, seems like the uh -huh, if I only had a brain kind of guy? <laughs> or does he seem pretty No, more like there. the... Um, 
like the frightening sort of Batman Begins sort of scarecrow. <laughs> okay. But less Just, human. We already like, got a Falfer. We don't more... need another one. <laughs> oh yeah. no. <laughs> that was that was something. That's what that was. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Three minutes in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't take much. Mm. All right. Um we're gonna jump right in to initiative order. Um, we ended off on round two of combat. Uh, Sir Godfrey, you are up. Currently, um, you all downed the scarecrow that was right in front of you. As you look to your left and to your right, you see two scarecrow to your right approaching and one to your left. What do you do? Hold on, I need to see some time. So really quickly, repeat all that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I will repeat all that. <laughs> so, so wait, so there's how many scarecrows around us? Yes, so uh, there is uh, two to your right and one to your left. Uh, eh. the, the two to your right are approaching at about a 40 foot range. The one to your oh. left is about 30 feet from Dimitri. And how many of my newfound friends have been, um, um, have had their patience tried by these scarecrows? Yeah. Like, how many of them are frightened? Yeah, right now you can see that Sterling is uh, frightened still, uh, right to your left, who is in the center of, of, of the two of you. And, and, Who's all around me right now? Just out of curiosity. Yeah. I can't really tell. I'm yeah. Looking at... Okay. So I'll, I'll point it out here and hopefully you can see here. Thank you. Uh, Sterling's here, frightened. You uh -huh. are to his right. Dimitri yeah. is to his left. You uh -huh. have a scarecrow over on this end, which you can't see, who is currently off camera. I will fix that. There you go. There's a scarecrow to Dimitri's left. And there are Thank two you. scarecrows approaching on this end here. And Esmeralda is right behind you. As well as behind me, Sterling's next to me. Okay, cool. Um, just to be safe, I my sword is still in hand. I kind of look around and see what's going on. I go, "This is not what I asked for right now." Um, and I hold my sword in front of me and I start to speak in Draconic and a burst of light is going to shoot from me and come around me in a 30 foot aura. Uh, as I cast Aura of Purity, um, everyone that is non-hostile in that 30-foot radius can't be diseased, resistance to poison, and you have advantage on saving throws against blind, charmed, deferent, frightened, paralyzed, poison, paralyzed, poisoned, and stunned. Very nicely done. And that is 30 oh. feet, you said? 30 feet radius. Okay. From me. Okay. All right, let me see. Let me grab one of my trusty spell templates here. So that, that'll be in addition to the plus three to any saving throw with my aura of protection. Yes, I believe, oh, I guess that would stack. Yeah, would, yeah. Yeah, it, it, yeah, it stacks. Okay, I don't know. Because yours is more of a number and mine is just giving you advantage. Yep, yeah. Mm. yeah, exactly. Okay, so. Let's do that aura of protection. Do you have do you have a, a, a radius on yours as well? Um, or my aura is uh, ten feet. Okay, so basically for yours, uh, um, Sterling and yeah, Sterling and Godfrey are covered. Um, for yours, Godfrey currently Esmeralda, Dimitri, and Sterling are covered. Okay. Okay. I feel uh, great. We're gonna do this. Boom. Or our protection, y'all. All right. Um, would you like I'm to move? I'm not even on the screen at this point. No, you're not. I I'm not even on there. That's nope. how dead I am. Sorry. Esmeralda, okay. you're up. Muskoka, you're on deck. Uh, yeah, I, don't, I don't have a bonus action right now. I guess I guess hold my, oh, my sword in preparation if someone okay. tries my patience. That's it. Was that a, sorry, was that a bonus action, the spell? Nope, I would, no, oh, I'm just saying action? that. I'm, I'm just watching. I'm Got just it. finishing the turn. Got it, Esmeralda. You're up. Let's go uh, up here on deck. I'm, I'm suddenly feeling really good right now, and if my scarecrow logic is correct, I'm thinking I'm going to hit one with a fighter bolt because maybe it might, you know. Very nice. Do some damage. Do it. So, I uh, let me see. Where is the, There's one on the left and two on the right. Oh yes. 
Let's hit the one on like one of them on the right and hope the other one catches fire. I don't know. Fingers crossed. Mm -hmm. I'm feeling good right now, so I'm gonna go ahead and roll this. Uh, and that is a 24 to hit. That's a hit. And let me see here. That is 12 points of fire damage. Very nice. Okay, we are gonna say that that is number two, that is B. 24? That was a 24 to hit. Oh, sorry, how, how much damage? Uh, I know, sorry. 12, I believe. I mean, yeah, 24 points. That's, yeah, no. That's exactly <laughs> it's it. It's okay. <laughs> Muskoka, uh, anything else, Esmeralda? No. Okay. I'm just going back and. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Muskoka, you're up. Dimitri on deck. Well, well, I'm paralyzed with fear. So, what are my options? Yeah. So, currently, unfortunately, you are all the way over there. Yeah. And we can see you very clearly now in the middle of the Van Gogh painting, yeah. as you aptly named it last time. Um, yeah, I can see it better this time. But but now that you're frightened. <laughs> You can see that uh, marker a lot easier. That is you here. Yeah. There is a scarecrow right here. Yeah. Um, and let me just find out real quick. So until the end of the scarecrow's next turn. So you have this turn still frightened, which you can't really do anything. You are... Uh, your advantage on ability checks and attack rolls, um, you can't willingly move closer, and you are paralyzed. Okay, so I can't move further either. Yeah, I was just reading you both. Yeah, thanks for clarifying. No problem. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do nothing on my turn then. <laughs> okay, fair enough. <laughs> um, and as you watch, your eyes are wide, and you're watching this, this cackling scarecrow approach. Um, terrifyingly so, um, as it starts to kind of look at you and it kind of dances from side to side, almost taunting yep. you as it approaches. When all of a sudden, from behind the scarecrow, you hear, no! and there is an impact in the back of the scarecrow's leg as branches kind of fly in either direction. And just behind, you see this little goat rear up with its hooves in the air, heroically attempting to save you yes, from this scarecrow. <laughs> uh, it's not dead, but it did take a little bit of damage. The MVP is the goat in this game. Yeah, I got it. Yeah. We got it. We're good. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I can't believe I'm finally getting a mount. <laughs> <laughs> We're playing second fiddle to a goat, Jay. Yeah. Is that what's happening here? Yes, that is exactly what's oh, happening. That's here. great. Oh, well, thanks. All, thanks. Does he say up. anything? Does he say anything, Jay, as he does it? <laughs> what does he say, Jay? He says, I got you, bro. <laughs> um, <laughs> Dimitri, you're up. Falfer, you're on deck. Okay. Um, I'm closely eyeing the one that's coming out uh, from the grass side. Yep. And um, as soon as that one gets close enough, yep. I'm going to uh, swing with my longsword. So I'm just gonna hold an action. Okay, you're ready in action to attack the one that's coming, approaching from the left. Yep. Falfer, uh, you are up. Currently, uh, you can see yourself here, just on the edge of the awesome ability um, that Godfrey just used. Uh, there is nice. a scarecrow approaching just to your left, and there is one approaching over to your right. Okay, Jay, you know where that half burnt wall is on the ruin? Yeah. Yep. I want to try to get behind the half wall. Okay. If I can. Okay. Yeah, that one. You can get okay. to here um, okay. because of the swamp being difficult to rain where the water is. Okay. Um, so, so I'm going to kind of here, try to take as much cover as I can. Yep. So, so you, I'm not sure how much cover you're gonna allow me to take, but yeah. So you have, you have. I'll say you have full cover from this one. Okay. But maybe half cover from that one because of the pen. 
Okay, and from there, Jay, I'm gonna pull out my short bow. Yep. And do uh, an attack, a single attack on the one that's nearest me. Um, so I can, I, it looks to me like the one that's nearest me is the one that's back behind where Muskoka is. This one's is the closest. This is, well, yeah, so actually this one's closer. Okay. Uh, this one you don't have any cover from. The right. one that's back okay. here. But so yeah. since I am, ooh. Since I am um, not covered by that one, I'm gonna attack that one first. Okay. The one that's, yeah, that okay. I'm not hidden from. Okay. Um, yeah. So. Oh, okay, that's a 15 to hit. Uh, that's a hit. Okay. And uh, eight points of damage. Okay. As your arrow kind of passes through, it sends shards of of twigs and uh raven feathers out the back of the scarecrow uh sterling you are up all right um so which one gave me the willies um the one that is approaching from the left okay um just to the other side of dimitri over here you all right can't see. so i i take i take my attack with disadvantage because i'm frightened Okay. So um, I, that's a 16 and a nine to hit on both of my crossbow bolts. 16 is hit, nine is not. Okay, uh, and that's with the, the Vishnad, Vishnad crossbow. Okay. I'm saying it wrong. Okay. I'm sure. Um, so it counts as magical. So uh, okay. that's just four points of damage though. Okay. Uh, and you do notice, um, Felfer, that your bolts didn't quite do as much damage as you thought they would. Um, do I feel like the ones that count as magical are doing damage? Yes. Like the, what I would expect? Yes. Okay. Okay. Hey, quick question. Yeah. Just because I need to understand it, and this might screw things up, and I apologize. Um, are they... Are they frightened or are they paralyzed? Um, target is frightened. And is there a save? I'm, I just wanted to make sure the aura is doing what it needs to do. They're I, frightened I and paralyzed. Oh, okay. They're both. I mean, paralyzed kind of <laughs> takes care of the frightened stuff, but yeah. Okay. Yeah. So do I not take... So I shouldn't have taken a, uh, an attack then? or? <clears throat> oh, wait a second. That is correct. That's what I was trying to figure out. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. frightened because that helps me understand. Yeah, you're incapacitated. Okay. Sorry, Brian, I take that back. I so apologize. In incapacitated, so I'm just, just so I know which conditions to apply. Yeah. Just incapacitated or? Uh, Yeah, so, uh, yeah, you're incapacitated. You automatically fail strength and dexterity saves. Yeah. Attack rolls have advantage. Groovy. Okay. And you have disadvantage, um, but you can't attack. So, so just just imagine a robot man with a horrified expression on his face that's not moving like <laughs> <laughs> And that's what I am right now. Good. Okay. My My bad. Um on that one. All right, the scarecrows are going to close in. Uh the aura doesn't affect the scarecrows at all, correct? Omega. Nope. They do not, no. Okay, all right. Just do a screen grab, Brandon. It'll be easier. So that one is going to close in. Uh, Adam, you can go ahead and take your attack of opportunity. Ooh, okay. It's a dirty 20 to hit. Oh. That is a hit. And I'm going to apply Divine Smite to it. Smite. And... Ooh. Okay, it's uh, 15 slashing damage okay. plus 7 radiant. 15 slashing damage plus how much radiant? 7. 7. Very nice. So yeah, um, you can tell that... Uh, and sorry, your, your sword is magical? The... No. The radiant is just from the... From smite? Uh, from applying divine smite. Yeah, okay. Okay. All right. 
Okay, it is, uh, as you as it approaches you, you take a swing with your longsword, it cuts deep, and that radiant energy begins to singe the edges of the material, wrapping its kind of um, stick-like exoskeleton. Um, but as it, with its, um, hang on one sec, sorry. With this momentum, it's going to attack you. Um, that is going to be not enough as two of the strikes from its claws glance off your armor. Uh, the other two weren't able to make it to you guys just yet because they're sloshing through the swamp. Uh, so Godfrey, it, it, it's just shy of you. The one that was attacking you as Merelda was able to. It's going to attack twice. That's a natural 20. That's a natural ah. 20. Ah! I just rolled a two natural 20s. How dare you? Um, I'm gonna give First myself that one. <laughs> no, you don't get the pretty, the pretty stone And then I'm heart also dice. gonna give myself <laughs> that one. You're dirtying our dice. He's, he, he, we need a new contract, Jay. <laughs> oh, that was fun. Um, <laughs> Okay, so that is going to be, this. oh gosh, uh, eight, 16. Oh. oh, I don't like how you're waiting too long to add up numbers. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Oh, I'm a 24 eight. points of damage. I'm, I'm, I'm oh, a skulker Did we lose right somebody? I don't know, uh, oh but. Uh, oh my gosh, eh? I think I, we lost yeah. somebody. Where am I? Nope. Where am I? I'm totally Sorry about that. That's okay. Hey, that I, it's all good. I'm we'll figure it out. I'm just going to say that uh, I, I did not take any of that damage <laughs> because I am now Muskoka. <laughs> That's um, 24 I'm points sorry, of damage. Very well. <laughs> How much was that? 24 points of damage, Norm. I'm reeling it back in. 22? It's all good. Uh, 24. Literally so everything 24 is so crashed. painful. Yes. Everything break. <laughs> it's all good. You're a guest, oh, you're allowed. Thanks, Obama. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, Scarecrow attacks you, Falfer. Okay. Okay. Um, does a 15 hit? Uh, meets it. Do, and uh, so a 12 does not. So 15 is going to hit, and you are going to take eight points of damage as it claws okay. across your arm as you have your short bow extended. Okay. The one here, Muskoka, is gonna approach you, ignoring the goat currently. He doesn't chase the goat away that's further a, from me? That's a dirty 20 and a nine. I'm a, uh, actually, he gets advantage. Okay. Good thing, because I rolled two natural ones, but advantage. Um, natural 20s and then two natural ones? Yeah, I know, right? Hexed tonight. Seven. Uh, Seven. 11 points of damage, Skoka, yeah. as he claws into you. gonna do here folks Fine. the two that are still approaching uh, as Merelda one of them is going to attempt to use its terrifying glare on you I'd like you to make a wisdom saving throw please don't I have a protection from you currently do uh, so you get advantage aha and how close are you said... to my character uh she is 20 feet. Oh, okay. And you said a wisdom save, you said? Yep. Twenty-one! Woo! You pass. Um, and the other one is going to attempt it on Godfrey. Because I'm not gonna use DM knowledge at this time. As it looks <laughs> into your eyes, Godfrey, it attempts to terrify you. He just, he looked, he feels something, a presence, 
and his eyes just look up at that scarecrow. You are not Argenvost. You have no will over me. It is your turn. And with that, he's going to rush towards that uh, person. Oh my God, Brandon. He's going to rush towards that. How far are they from me? Uh, 10 feet. Yeah. He's going to just rush over and two-handed um, swipe at that individual. Very nice. Um, twice. Very nice. <laughs> you got me effed up. Okay. Using my Black uh, Lives Matter dice. That was not supposed to be a natural 20. I'm sorry. Uh, that is a 19 to hit. That is a hit. Attack. That is a 24 to hit for the second attack. <laughs> Those are both hits, sir. They surely will. Um... <laughs> That's going to be 17. Twenty-six. Thirty-two. Forty points of slashing damage. Woo! What? You utterly decimate this scarecrow as it just explodes. Uh sorry, is that that wasn't magical though, was it? Uh Technically, no, he does not have a magical uh, weapon. Ah, so it does not explode, <gasps> but you it almost explodes. Mm. Uh, it is on its last legs, and you can see it's basically, you've torn it almost in half at the torso as it kind of wobbles back and forth, just barely holding on. That's almost creepier. Right? <laughs> That's almost worse. Mm -hmm. As Merelda, you're up. Ms. Koki, you're on deck. Uh, so there's there's a scarecrow that's attacking me still, yes? Yes, there is. Right beside you. So what you see is like Esmeralda's wild curly locks just st kind of start to get staticky. Yeah. And, uh, I see what's coming. And then sh as she unleashes uh, a lightning bolt at him. So he has to make a dex save. All right. Uh, that is a 20. How dare you, Jay? Sorry. Half damage. How dare you? All right. Well, it's still cast at fourth level, so we'll okay. see here. Ugh. All right. So that's a 27. To hit? Hit? No, Sorry, 27 that's, damage. That's, Sorry, yeah. my brain. Brain's not working. 27. Uh, 27 is the full damage, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. That's a lot of damage. Got it. And it is going to take half of that. Ooh. All right. That is your turn. So Muskoka, yes. you're up. Dimitri, you're on deck. Am I still paralyzed? Um... No, you were not. Yes! All of a sudden, you feel that uh, you start to, your, your limbs, you start to get feeling back in them. What do you do? Uh, okay. Uh, I'm going to use uh, disengage. Okay. Right? Hmm. And I'm going to run. Okay. The party. Which direction are you going to run? Towards the party. Okay. And as I run, I'm gonna be like, "Oh my God, free!" And I'm gonna just like run <laughs> right towards them. <laughs> okay, so that is uh, five, ten, fifteen, uh, and you're gonna use. So you use disengage. You can only move fifteen unless you come up here and you run along the land. You can get a little bit further. Yeah, as far as I can towards them. Okay, you're basically beside Fall for now. How come only 15? My my speed is 30. Yeah, is so you move, tw you move 20 because uh, the swamp that you were standing in is difficult terrain. So you had to oh, like slog through until you got up and then you start to yeah. run through. So you move 25. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, yeah I'm out of there. Good. Dimitri, you're up. Falfi, you're on deck. All right, I'm attacking with the long sword again. Okay. The one that's right next to me. Yep. 21 to hit. That's a hit. And uh, it's eight slashing damage. Very nice. And I'm going to attack again. Yep. Uh, 18 to hit. That's a hit. 
and another eight slashing damage, but I'm going to add Divine Smite. And um, so it's going to be six uh, radiant damage. All right. You come across with both of those strikes, just making massive slices in its exterior. And when you come across with that radiant damage, it explodes, shards of it starting to fizzle out in the swamp that surrounds you. It is dead. Nicely done. Fall for your up, Sterling, you're on deck. Okay. Um, you know, having recently seen the goat come to uh, Muskoka's defense, <clears throat> I'll just turn to the goat in the distance and say, uh, careful, little one. Seems we're not in Velaki anymore. And uh, basically, I... Uh, take my arrow and and point it to the uh, the one that looks like two torsos. You know, the one that's split in half. Yep. Um, and I'm going to try to aim at the bottom of the V, wherever it's lot not split. Yep. That's kind of where I'm I'm aiming for. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. So that will be a <laughs> ten to hit. Just missed. And because I chose to use my short bow, I have no other attack. So uh, okay, <laughs> you uh, shoot over the shoulder of the one that is right in front of you. And unfortunately, just at the distance that you are, you miss. Okay, Sterling, you're up. All right, um, uh, I can move now. Yes. Boy, you can. Um, <laughs> let's see. Then. Yeah, what's the closest uh, enemy to me? So the one that's closest to you, there's two. Uh, the one that's closest is just behind you with Esmeralda, which is yeah. here, or okay. the one that is fighting Godfrey, which is there. Um, I mean, Godfrey seems to be doing okay, and I'm sure Esmeralda's fine too, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna attack the one that Esmeralda's fighting. Okay. Um, Cause it looks like Godfrey's doing some, some serious work over there. Yeah, so he is. I wanna, don't want to kill steel. Uh, so, yeah, yeah like Joel care. almost did. <laughs> 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 All right, so let's see what I can do. Uh, ooh, eight. Uh, and this is with my sword, and an 18. Okay, so Vicious Long Sword, the 18 is the only one that hits. Yes. I'm assuming. Yes. And uh, that is uh, eight points of magical damage. All right. And that is to the one that got hit by the. Lightning bolt. Perfect. Yeah. All right. Immediately that one turns, seeing you coming, still sizzling from the lightning, and it's going to take a swing at you. It's not going to be enough, as it just glances off your armor, and then a swing at Esmeralda. And I'm assuming a 12 does not hit Esmeralda. It does not. Both of those miss. Um. This one is going to join its friend, attacking Godfrey. The one that's right in front of you, Godfrey, that is still in half, uh, starts to flail with its arms. That is going to be a 15. No. Um, 14 is definitely not going to do it then. The other one is a na 21. That one makes it past the new tame mail that I have. Thank you. <laughs> yes, that's right. And uh, an eight. Okay, so that one's gonna hit. So you are going to take six points of damage, slashing damage. The one right in front of you, Falfer, is gonna take two swipes. Yeah, I'm fine. Both of them miss. In fact, one of them, as it comes across, um, you manage to turn your bow and twist as it snaps its right arm in half taking away one of its abilities to attack. Ah. All right. Um, and then this one's gonna chase you, Muskoka. 10, 15, 20. It reaches you as it <laughs> laughs and cackles as it kind of follows behind you, uh, chasing right at your heals, it is going to attack. Uh, does a 14 hit? No. Both of them miss. You feel nothing but air 
just at the back of your neck as you bolt towards the party. I keep running, man. Um, that is it currently. Back up to the top of the order. Godfrey, you're up. Esmeralda, you're on deck. Mm hmm. Uh, he hits me, and I get to look up and go, I would feel that if I were alive. But I'm not. In an attempt to decapitate him. Nice. As I. The one that's already severely injured? Yep. Yep. That is math. A 16 to hit? That's hit. Well, just in case. That's. Ooh, that's really good, actually. That's. 20 points. Nope. Yeah, 20 points of slashing. Uh, that'll do it. As his head lobs off its shoulders, landing into the swamp nearby. And as it lobs down, I look at it, and you would think that this old zombie man just laughed as he rushes, uh, uses his movement, rushes to the one that's on Brand, on, Brand, on Sterling and Esmeralda. Um, there is and, still one behind you. You will get an attack of opportunity if you do oh, that. Oh, I did not realize that. Then fine, I'm gonna go after him instead. No, never mind. <laughs> With the second attack. Um, that is a crit. Very nice. What do you do? Beow, beow, beow. How do you do your damage? Uh, max damage for the first dice. Roll the second. Add your modifier. My apologies. So if I have 2d10, only one of those is max, and yes. I roll the other so one? Yes, so 10, roll the second d10, add gotcha. that, then your modifier. Gotcha. 19, 23. 23 points of damage, yes. um, which is half of that. Half of that. You need to get yourself a magical sword, sir. Hey, we didn't talk about that beforehand. <laughs> oh. Yeah, we will. We'll take area, or at least the Vistani will. Um, all right, as you, again, you, you lob off, and with the same movement, you come across, um, t taking it out almost at the hip. Um, Esmeralda, you're up. Ms. Cole, you're on deck. Okay. Is that one down, am... Jay? No. Or no? No. Okay. But the one that was right in front of me attacking me is it's still It's still there. This. Yep. Yeah, so annoying. So I will hurl another lightning bolt at it. Okay. I'll let the mega deck save. Uh, that is going to be a 12. That does not make it if you oh. only had some decks. Uh, so he's going to take 28 points of lightning Ooh. damage. And as you cast this fire, uh, this lightning bolt at it, uh, the lightning surges through its body. Um, and it being in the swamp, thankfully not electrifying you right next to it, uh, it starts to rack as it begins to smoke and catches fire as it begins to flail and falls back dead I'm into just the to warm swamp. My hands <laughs> in front of it. <laughs> Very nice, Muskoka. You're up, Dimitri on deck. I'm trying to read. A, I was trying to read a spell as quickly as I could because I haven't used it before. Um, I, I'm considering using Spirit Guardians. Okay. Uh, and I, I just want to keep. I just. I, I'm gonna read through it. Yeah, read it out for, for everyone. For our sakes. Yeah, everyone here. Uh, you call forth spirits to protect you. They flit around you in a distance of 15 feet. Yep. Uh, to a distance of 15 feet for the duration. If you're good, they're Fey or Angelic. When you cast a spell, you can designate any number of creatures that are unaffected. Uh, an, un an unaffected creature, an affected creature's speed is halved in the area, and when the creature enters the area for the first time, or starts a turn there, it must make a Wisdom saving throw. Uh, on a failed save, it takes three d8 radiant damage. Ooh. So, um. Are you gonna do that? Yeah, I can do that. Okay, 15 foot radius. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, they flit around me up to 15 feet from me. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I, yeah, so it'll, it'll be, it'll be in, yeah. So I, I guess it'll, will it, will it do damage immediately or only on the creature's turn? It says it starts if it, its turn there. Yeah, if it starts its turn, it takes the damage, right? Yeah. 
So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Okay. I'm doing that. I cast... I take my totem from my pouch, <laughs> which has not worked well in Rovia so far, and I will cast Spirit Guardians. As you do, uh, spiritual uh, beings rise up, but as they do, you see that they're angelic, but as you look closer, they're twisted, almost like their spines are doubled over as they attempt and are operated and they're there, but the, the, the gloom of Barovia has affected that spell. Still full effect, but they're not those angelic, masterful beings that you imagined they would be. They goats. Oh, are they goats? <laughs> no. Oh, yeah. They look um, like goats, don't they, Jay? No, they don't. They're like moose. Goats. Enough with the yeah, goats. Yeah, they're moose. <laughs> Already. Yeah. I'll never gonna live down the goats. <laughs> okay, that is, okay. Too. that is your turn. Dimitri, you're up. Okay, the, um, so so the one that is in front of Esmeralda, that one's dead already, right? Correct. Uh, correct. Okay. Is the one next to Godfrey still up? Yeah, there is one next to Godfrey. You want to go over there? Yeah, I'm just gonna make my way over. Okay. And swing with the long sword. Is a 13 gonna hit? Uh, it is. Oh. Okay. Then it's um. 14 slashing, Ooh. and I'm going to come back and attack again. Okay. And 25 to hit. That's a hit. And it's uh, 9 slashing. Okay. And quite frustrating as you hit it. Um, still doing damage, but not as much as you would like it to at this point. Um, Sterling, you're up. Oh, sorry, Falfer, you're up. Sterling, you're on deck. Yeah, okay. So um, at this point, having seen that my cr my crossbow, sorry, my short bow didn't have the effect that it ha wanted it to have, yeah. I will um, I will again attempt to light the, uh, to use my oil flask. Yeah. Dip my arrow tips into the oil. Okay. Light them on fire. Okay. And, sh and uh, shoot both of the still standing, or there's two still standing, There's right? one right in front of you in your face. There's one right okay. in your grill. And there's yep. one uh, at Muskoka just to their left. And then there's okay. one still standing over by Godfrey. Okay, so I'm going to attempt to get the one in front of me first. If okay. he goes down, I'll shoot somewhere else. Okay, at that close distance though, I believe it's disadvantage. What's the lowest range for your bow? 30. Yeah, so below that it's disadvantage. Okay, can I move out to that space though, Jay? Uh, you'll get an attack of opportunity unless you disengage, which is an action. Uh, I'll take disadvantage on the first attack. Okay. Okay, point blank, here we go. Oh, okay, um, that's gonna be fun. Um, so, am I a, am I a, I'm a halfling, aren't I? Yeah. Ah, uh, so my one doesn't count. Ah. Uh, Ooh. He remembered. <laughs> <laughs> so I got a 14 to hit. I mean, sorry, yeah, 14 to hit. 14's a hit. Yeah. How many? On the oh. first. Damage. Uh, 14 to hit, and then, uh, yes, that is. Sorry, that is. Come on, D&D Beyond, let's do this. Uh, four damage. Okay. Um, you're close to it, so it's, it just doesn't get that velocity, and you basically hold it point blank, and you let go, and it, it goes a little for far into its cheek. As a okay. And the fire, what does the fire do? Does the fire do Oh, anything? you're, okay, so what I do want to say, sorry, is that it will take time to light it on fire. It wouldn't be a yes. free action to do all that. So if okay. you want to do that, that'll be your action instead of the attack. I apologize, Let's I forgot that. to say that. I'll light them on fire for this turn, and then I'll do the, my attacks next turn. Okay, give me a survival check on that. Sure. As you're lighting a... Oh, natural 20. Survival okay. Check. So magically, somehow, you manage to light your metal <laughs> tipped uh, arrow with uh, fire. As you dip it. Oh, actually, you dipped it in oil, so that's fine. Yeah. Okay. All right. So you're cool. currently on fire, but no damage done yet. Okay. Okay. Turn taken. All right. Uh, Sterling, you're up. 
All right. Um, if if I make a move right now, am I incurring? Uh, nope. Opportunity attack. Nope. Oh, okay. They're, uh, currently, uh, the the one is just to the left and behind you, at fighting Godfrey. All right. I'm I'm actually gonna help out uh, Muskoka and Falfer. I'm gonna okay. head over there. Uh, and I want to be within view of uh, the one that's behind Muskoka. There's one behind him, right? Yes. Okay, so I, I want to be able to take a couple of shots at it. Okay, so you're basically just still inside the circle, and you, okay. got, a, you got a shot past Muskoka there. Would I know where the edge of the circle is? Like, is that fizz rep right there? Yeah, well, you okay. wouldn't necessarily know, but you would feel it if you passed it. You just still feel okay. the, the effects of it. Okay, so I'm taking two shots at the one by uh, Muskoka there, and um, one of them would be a hit, uh, but it only does four points of damage magical. Four magical damage? Very nice. Yeah. Okay. Taken. Cool. All right, the one right in front of you, Falfer. Natural one again. The second one is a um, 22. Ooh, that'll hit. Yeah. Um, so the, the the first one, it tries to attack you. Um, actually, it only gets one attack. So uh, I'm going to say that it tries to attack you with the arm it doesn't have, and then realizes, wait a second, there's no arm there. Um, and I'm going to let you get away with that one with that natural one. Uh, the Who one behind the arm you, off again? what's that? Who took the arm off? Who you was did. It who took the arm off? You did. It got stuck in I your did? short bow and you turned it and it snapped the oh, arm. Oh, that's right. I, I flipped it with the. Okay, I'm sorry. I, so uh, I'm looking at the arm on the ground and I'll just say, uh, I took that one already. <laughs> Very good. Um, David, uh, with a 16 is the first hit, the one right behind you. Um, and it's going to take damage as well. How much damage does it take? You want to roll that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I do. Gonna take 3d8. Ooh, 18. Ooh. Okay, so as it as you feel it start to um, catch up and gain on you, it strikes out, and you feel it rake across your back. You take six points of damage, but as it's about to rake again, it is struck with this magical energy and takes. Um, sorry, was it 14? You said or 13? 18. 18. More, way more than that. 18 points of... Is it radiant damage? It is. Very good. And you can see it starting to come a, a, come apart at the seams. Godfrey, that one is going to attack you once. That is a 16. Does that hit? Uh, yeah, sorry, I was muted. Yeah, it hits, okay. Mm -hmm. That is going to be seven points of damage. Mm -hmm. And it okay. rakes across at you, Godfrey. You take that damage. And then it spins with its other claw to hit you, Dimitri. That's a natural 20. <sighs> That's going to be four. It's going to be eight, huh. nine, 13, 14 points of damage as he scrapes Ooh. right across your neck. And it's... um. It's next to uh, both of us, right? Yes. Then I'm gonna, with my reaction, attack using the Sentinel feed. Very nice. Uh, 17 to hit. That's a hit. And it's uh, nine slashing damage, but I'm also gonna add a Divine Smite. Very nice. Just for good measure. And it's 12 Radiant. Very good. Um, and as as you come across again, <laughs> dissolves into the swamp below. Only two left. You are doing very well. <sighs> Thank you. All right, uh, the one in front of you, Falfer. Uh, it attacked. Sorry, I went through that, didn't I? Yes, I did. Yep. That is it. Uh, Sir Godfrey, you're up. Esmeralda, you're on deck. And where are people, where, where, where are these? Yeah, so at? currently, uh, this is you. Uh-huh. Dimitri's here. Esmeralda's here. Yep. Sterling's here. Yep. Scarecrow with Falfer. Yep. Scarecrow with Muskoka. 
Cool. I go over to the one with Falfer. Don't forget that my radius comes with me. Oh, yeah. That's cool. So you basically make it to here just inside the swamp. You are too far to attack it. But Sterling and Falfer are now within your radiance. Ra if I'm too far to attack it, I'll double move then. Okay. To get, to get just, right behind it. Yep. Okay. So now you are within striking range. Go to now. the other side of it, please. Oh, uh, like next, uh, more to the right. Just a little bit. Yeah, yeah. There we go. Thank you. No problem. So now Muskoka and Falfer are within your range. Yep. Trying to get, trying to help them out. Um, and um, as I move, you see my wounds begin to close ever so slightly. Uh, because regeneration, you're not going to keep me down. <laughs> Very nice. Go back to uh, a good, nice uh, a number. That's it. <laughs> Esmeralda, you're up. Muskoka, you're on deck. Uh, the one that's attacking Muskoka. Yep. I am going to hit with a firebolt. Very nice. So that is a 25 to hit. That's a hit. For 12 points of fire damage. Ooh. Um, and they are vulnerable to fire. So it is going to take double damage. Oh, Sweet. 24. Um, which, how would you like to finish off? Uh, there's two left, actually. Sorry, my bad. Um, so that is the one with Muskoka. And you mm -hmm. feel the heat from the fire behind you, Muskoka, as it explodes. I, you can tell me how it explodes there, Esmeralda. That was good. Oh, uh, you know, he, he kind of like, uh, you know when the jack-o'-lantern starts to uh, like rot? Yeah. Like mm. his face just kind of goes <laughs> And then uh, it all it just explodes into just flames. <laughs> And I'm just like, oh, you know, I really wish I had some marshmallows. That's good. <laughs> That's very good. Maybe a s'more situation later. I don't know. <laughs> That's great. There is one left, Falfer. Uh, I'm sorry. That was Esmeralda. Muskoka, you're up. Dimitri, you're on deck. Muskoka, there is one scarecrow left just to your right with Godfrey mm -hmm. and Falfer. Yeah. Is anybody hurt right now? Uh, looking around, uh, I want to look around and assess the the of my friends. Yeah, does anybody see hurt? Who's, who's hurt the most? I'm hurt slightly. I mean, not terribly, but yeah. Yeah, I've oh, taken just a little hits. bit. Actually, one big hit. These are these are vague answers. So everybody's just slightly discomfort. Yeah. Like, um, <laughs> um. Gosh. Okay, I'm going to. Uh, uh, sorry. To take so long on this. No worries. Um, I, I'm going to. Uh, there's not much I can do really to help these people. How does the scarecrow look? Um, it looks pretty healthy compared to the rest, except that the fact that it has okay. missing one of its arms. Okay, with I, I can. Uh, I'd, I'd like to throw my axes at him. Okay, let's do that. Uh, okay. A check number one. It's a it's a twenty one to hit. That's Ooh, a hit. I check my second, and it's a twenty to hit. Nice. Natural the first twenty. First one is gonna do no no uh, dirty. Uh, okay. First one does six damage. Yeah. The second, ooh, three. Okay. <laughs> so I'll just uh, ah. <laughs> that's five points of damage. <laughs> As these axes, yeah. you see them uh, right just out of the corner of your eye. You see these axes approaches. Two of them embed themselves in the scarecrow. And and I do have a battle axe. Can I can I take that and hold it now? Uh, I'll allow you to draw it, sure. Okay, and then I'll I'll take that one out just to be prepared. Okay, Sterling, you're up. Sorry, I, I keep missing a bunch of people, don't I? Dimitri, you're up. Falfa, you're on deck. Uh, okay, I'm able to reach it with mo normal movement. Uh, I don't know, probably not. That's 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 puts you like right here, and then you'd have to go back into the swamp if okay. you were to double move. I'll, yeah, I'll dash. I'll dash to get there. Okay, so it puts you like right, you're engaged with it, but can't do anything. Okay, Falfa, yep. you're up. 
Yep. So I'm going to uh, use my hand crossbows. And well, you have uh, you have a you have an arrow on fire now. In your short yes. bow, right? So one is there on fire. The other one is in the uh, in the the scarecrow. Correct. Uh. Like I landed one in his eye. Oh no, that's right. No, I you didn't. Because you had to take your action to. No. Yeah. So you have one okay, loaded. So can I ask permission, dear DM, hmm. that I, uh, to be able to have put both of the tips of the of the crossbow bolts in the oil flask at the same time to light sure. them simultaneously? Sure. For for full okay. action. Sure. Yeah. So uh, so yeah. So I will aim at the uh, the dude in front of me and uh, fire away. That is okay. A 22 to hit on the first and a 17 to hit on the second. Remember, remember those are disadvantage. Uh, so that's a 20, sorry, that's a 17 to hit on the first. Yep. And and a uh, 10, to hit, 10 to hit on the second. Okay, so the 17 hits. Cool. Um, so fire now so that's nine damage uh that's going to be 18 because it's fire damage Ooh. that's what we'll say um and as it embeds into the creature's head as it begins to burn up its neck it flailing at its neck with its only hand and you all see the twinkling of fire in in uh, Falfer's eyes, just relishing the, the warmth of the night as he's seeing the, uh, the Scarecrow go up in flames. Very good. <laughs> Sterling, you're up. All right, I'm going to close the gap with the one that's uh, behind um, the Skulka, if I can. My uh, there is, th- there's only one left. That one's dead. Oh. Oh, great. Okay. Uh, so the one that's left, uh, I'm going to close the gap. Five. 10, 15, you're able to make it. Now you are okay. beside uh, Dimitri and Sir Godfrey. I make two attacks, uh, 24 and a 19 to hit with my sword. Okay. And it's a total of 13 points of magical damage. All right, 13 points of magical damage. How do you want to finish off this last Scarecrow, Sterling? Ooh, okay, so I do this U-shaped strike that takes out both legs. And then while it drops down, I lop off the head. Very good. As it goes bloop, into the swamp, it, it falls takes dead. takes a level in, in being a monk. <laughs> and you are now surrounded by the sounds of the marsh. I walk over and I pick up my axes before I forget. Okay. And Noggins, <laughs> you don't know his name is Noggins yet, but yeah. Kind of trots over to you and kind of like. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. I, I pat him like, on the head and say, so hey, you, boy, you saved me. <laughs> so you uh, you talk to goats now? Uh, or was that always a thing? I actually don't know. Well, I can talk to animals. I just don't do it a lot because oh. I get weird looks. How long does it last? Is it 10 minutes? You don't say. I think it's only like a minute, but I've cast another concentration spell. I guess I'll just, I can dismiss the fae. Um, the, yeah, I think speak with animals, it's, well, speak it's with, 10 minutes. Speak with animals is a concentration spell? It's no, it's not. It's not. You, oh. Yeah. So if it's 10 minutes, then it's still active. Yeah. Oh, what? Yeah, because each round is only oh. six seconds. Oh, yes. We're going to fill. How, how many minutes of dialogue do I have left with you, Jay? Oh, gosh. Uh, <laughs> probably at least. Right <laughs> <laughs> I'd say at least nine and a half minutes. <laughs> uh, tell me about your siblings. <laughs> um, They're dead. <laughs> you, you came back. Thank you. I did. Okay, uh, so do you know, can, can you, uh, uh, I thought you were going to run to freedom. Uh, you. Can you help us find Baba? Baba, scary lady. Scary lady, yeah. We're going to give not you the, so much food. Not the black sheep. 
<laughs> which I, mean, I don't say out loud because Baba I don't understand Black goat. Sheep. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I leaned over to Dimitri. <laughs> Very good. I leaned over to Dimitri. What is he doing? <laughs> yeah, all you hear is him, uh, 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 and it responding. I'm, yeah, okay. I've never seen this. Should we leave them alone? Oh no, no, no! He, he's, he oh. can, uh, he can tell us where she is. The animal okay. can tell you where Baba Lasaga is. Oh yeah, he he can smell her. So that makes yeah. no sense. Oh yeah, animals got way better sense of smell than we do. He can smell her because she he was around her. So uh, he'll follow the trail. Can they smell themselves? Because seriously. It's like really bad. I can ask. Can you guys smell yourselves? How does that interfere with smelling other things? <laughs> I think I smell great. Yeah, he he uh he smells he's not he doesn't know. <laughs> hey hey, as there as uh as Muskoka is, you know, talking to this goat, I'm gonna go over and start just like just like eyeing it. You know, like goat size, trying to figure out whether or not it could qualify as a small mount for me, perhaps. Yeah, it's a small um, creature. What's a smaller goat? Okay, um, smaller goat. Yeah. So it probably wouldn't work as a as a mount. Then. As it looks over at you, like side eyes. What's okay. his deal? You've already got oh, a friend to mount. He's uh. <laughs> hey. <laughs> just watch your back with that guy. <laughs> Because he was looking for a mount. <laughs> yep. Okay, so are we, are we going to follow him or... or uh... I, uh, you, I've, you can I've speak heard with of him. Uh, using hounds for this sort of thing, but can we oh, really yeah. trust it to the nose of a goat? Yeah, they can't even really smell themselves. How are we going well, to trust if they... What what do, what do I know about the ability of a goat to smell? I mean, he told me he could smell her. <laughs> Nature check. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Natural twenty. Okay. Natural twenty. Yeah, goats aren't known for their <laughs> sense of smell. <laughs> they're not necessarily tracking animals. I I know that they're not the preferred animal for tracking. I've never seen one in an airport sniffing luggage. <laughs> But you know, I'm starting to think maybe, <laughs> maybe he doesn't have the best nose. But um... sorry, this goat is a medium goat. Sorry, not a small goat. I take that. He's a medium. Goat. Yeah. Medium oh, goat. tell her where her spirit is. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Size, Dave. Size, not a medium. It doesn't have. Telepathic abilities. Oh, you've led us astray, Jay. When uh, we started this uh, <laughs> predicament <laughs> with the scarecrows, yes, we also heard her cackle. You heard a cackle, yeah. Or I heard which way did that cackle? Yeah, come? perception check. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Godfrey. For Do you think <laughs> I would have proficiency in perception? <laughs> yes. Let right. us say yes. <laughs> How well can goats smell? I'm googling it while we play, just because oh, I'm curious. Oh, that's a dirty twenty. <laughs> uh, yeah, with a dirty twenty, um, it actually seemed like it came from a diff couple different areas, actually. So, as if it was moving, um, and you heard it throughout the battle from time to time. Um, and unfortunately, even with the Dirty 20, it came from the south, it came from the west for a moment. Everywhere. From the east, and then nothing for a little while now. Hmm. Godfrey just takes a moment as they're having a goat conversation um, and just holds his uh, sword and just listens. Okay. Um, I, go ahead. Sorry. I cannot trace where her sounds came from. She must be moving. D 
DM? Seems that's normal for her. DM, I want to interject for a moment. WildRepublic.com says that mountain goats have very good eyesight, can see movement up to a mile away, and they have a keen sense of smell and can de detect enemies long before there's any danger. That is an indeed beyond. <laughs> well, I'm, then I, I, we don't need you go. You can go. What do we write? Angry. He looks letters up at to? you. It gives you a really sad goat face. Yeah, I, I know. I, it, uh, I don't know. I guess you can follow us a little bit, but don't cause any trouble. He smiles. A goat smile. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, I, I don't know which way to go then, apparently. Um, and just to bring you guys back to where your surroundings are here, um, you can see uh, that you are right on the outskirts between the garden and the mansion area, um, kind of to the southwest there. Uh, and there is just ruins of mansion around you. Um, Dimitri, can I get a perception check from you, please? Mm hmm. Um, dirty 20. With a dirty 20, you feel a presence here. Um, somewhat inquisitive and. Malevolent, um, but not of this plane. Um, you get the sense that you're being watched from further within the ruins of the mansion. Hmm. I think we're definitely being watched out here. I think... I can sense from closer inside the mansion. We should, we should investigate. The mansion, AKA Argenvost told or in No, Berez? the current ruins of this mansion oh, in Berez. I didn't that realize you're the standing mansion here. That's in amongst late. right now. Gotcha. Thank you. Problem. Any clues yeah. where, my friend? Any sense of where, Dimitri? Um, not specifically, just in inside, closer. Perhaps if we got closer, it would it would make more sense. Well, if we you should see what it is. Let's go. Leads the way. Hmm. As you begin to kind of make your way through this mansion, half of it buried under the muck of the marsh, um, you see that it's littered with rotten remains of furniture and decor, um, hundreds of years potentially old at this point. Um, as you get kind of into the center sort of area, you see a shape apparate 10 feet in front of you. Can I get a marching order for the way that you guys are Moving through this mansion, please. I'll be up Alfred's front. definitely closest to that thing. <laughs> I'll I'll be up front with where Dimitri was, as as if we were going to look at it together. Okay. okay I'll, I'll, I'll be... follow behind them then. Yeah, I'll I'll be along with uh, Sterling. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll take the back with Noggins. And I'll I'll be in front of <laughs> uh, Muskoka and Noggins. Okay. <laughs> Just not understanding the goat creature. Just... <laughs> I like it. Are we going to eat him later, or what? That perks that perks Falfer's ears up. You noticeably noticeably note you notice him actually perking up at the at the sound of goat for food. I've got all spice in my back, by like my backpack. Mm. <clears throat> I honestly, I'm not against it. I just thought he could help us right now, but he can't. So. He seems. Okay, well, like, to... as long as he can't read our minds, it's fine, right? Yeah, I, uh, I don't think he can. 
I mean, I heard he was a medium, but apparently he's not really what I thought. Ah, yes. He is a, more of a medium. He's a medium rare. <laughs> soon, soon medium rare. <laughs> Good one, <laughs> darling. A ghost takes shape in the fog, assuming the form of a giant of a man his features mutilated and his entrails hanging out like frayed ropes. Despite its intimidating presence, the apparition has a cringing light in its eyes. It speaks. Why do you invade my home? Be gone, I beseech you. What do you do? Invade is such a strong word. Yeah, we are not invading. We are visiting. We are visiting. Just passing through. We literally just walked in. I don't think that constitutes an invasion. And he hovers as he watches in place. Back up a little. I'm going to back up. Kind of like five feet. I don't know how far in the door we are, but I'm going to make sure. You're, you're at the back, feet. so yeah, you, you back up a bit. I'll, I'll yeah, make sure both my... just my, outside the door. I'll make sure both my crossbows are drawn. Okay. Jay. Readying for uh, any kind of ambushed attack or basically watching the perimeter to make sure that there's no one, nothing else ready to attack. Okay. I'll... Uh... I'll put my shield on my back and I'll stow the sword, knowing that I've got the claws on my arms that I can pop very easily. Okay. But just as kind of like a show of like, hey, this doesn't have to get confrontational. Um, but, you know, hand, hands up and just body language very peaceful. Okay. Hmm. He watches. We... Uh, Okay, so it's paying attention to us. Oh, we yeah. You can see it's sentient. It's not a triggered event. It's not... Is it... Can we tell if it's magical in nature, Jay? Obviously, it's magical in nature. Um, can we tell if... Uh, can we tell if it's sentient? Like, is it thinking? Uh, it's absolutely looking at each of you very intently. Kind of mm. sizing you up and kind of... And not necessarily... It's It doesn't have a, a necessarily a defensive stance... Just a proud stance as it as it hovers, its entrails swaying. Afri pushes closer to the front. Okay. Um, and says, "Who do we have the honor of speaking to?" I was. The Burgomaster of this village, Laszlo Ulrich. Did you say a resident? No. Ulrich? It watches. We, we know an Ulrich, do we not? We did. At some point, um... Let me check my notes. Hmm. We may know some of your kin. Just allow us a moment. He watches uh, patiently. I don't. I don't see it in my notes, but I do recall the name for some reason. Give me a history check. Okay. That is. A uh, natural 20. I got a nat 20, too. What? Ooh. Double nat 20? That's quadruple the two. score. Um, with a natural 20, um, you heard of, through your time with the Vistani, um, you heard of Ulrich. Um, and you remember there was a sad, sad story, or it was met with sadness in the history books and in the stories that the Vistani had shared during your week with them. They talked about Berez um, and the fact that it used to be a thriving town and over time it was covered in swamp mystically one day. Um, and then Ulrich was at the center 
of what happened. Would I know anything about this? Um, give me a history check. I was gonna say, does are they older than I, or what? I have any idea of who this might be? Um, you don't have any idea. Uh, I got a twenty-one. Okay, with a twenty-one, you know pretty much. I mean, I should have just said that with with their natural twenties. Um, I would say that you, um, through your studies um, and from what you've read through Van Richten's journals and books, um, that there is a significant undead presence that is left from the people who used to live in Berez uh, in this place. But it's a very sad, dismal place. Again, for a specific reason that surrounds the old Burgomaster. I kind of just turn my back to the ghost to face everybody else and just like, a lot of bad things have happened here. There's a lot of undead. There's a lot of bad memories. You mean just, like more, more so than everywhere else? Well, okay, you don't have to put it that way, but like, there's just a lot of suffering here. Do, do we have to go in here? Like, we gotta find Baba so we can get the skull, right? I mean, yes. maybe they know something, but I, absolutely we should, you know make it clear that we mean no harm and we're just passing by. Yes, perhaps perhaps we can ask for some help to find Mrs. Lasaga. W- where you were, uh, were you part of the the battle that haunt this land? That is not correct. Okay, that's somewhat cryptic. <laughs> um, have have you heard of uh, this Baba Lasaga lady? And have you seen her? He just floats, no answer. Perhaps you know. Mean... Perhaps you know the name Argenvast told. Shakes his head, no. Are we trespassers on your uh, land? That is so... We don't mean any harm. Honestly. What? What? Uh, Maybe you could ask him what he thinks of Strad. Why do you want Hmm. me to ask that? I don't wanna. Why don't you get the goat to ask? I don't wanna ask this. Why? Your goat doesn't speak common. Fine. Do you... I still think this is a bad idea, as I turn to Muskoka. Uh, Spirit... uh, uh, Burgomaster... We are here to, or not here, but we are on our way in a mission to defeat Strahd eventually. It was just, I said to just ask what he thinks of Strahd. Well, I'm trying to, like, I'm not trying to, like, trying ease to it do. in. I'm not trying to him. ease it in. That we're, we're, Guys, come on. We're just trying to bring in all of that trauma. I'm going to bring that up. Can we just... I turn back around. Yes, uh, so... If... There is anything that you might know, or anything to add, which I don't think he will, about that. We might, will, if you don't, we'll just be on our way. Mm. Strad won't let me go. He bewitched one of my commune. And I put a stop to it. Is... is there a way we could help you? No. Okay. Is there a way you could help us? I... 
I don't know. Um, spirit, and just gesturing to its appearance and eviscerated body. Who did this to you? Was it Strahd? Yes. So he killed you, but he won't let you rest. For, for what purpose does he keep you like this? I'm sad to say yes. Uh, Muskogo will pu push his way a little bit further forward. We're we're trying to we're trying to stop Strahd. If if you can help us to find the things we're looking for, you may be able to get your final rest. He asks you what you're looking for. Well, there's kind of a long list, but right now we're looking for the the skull of Argenvoss. He doesn't seem to understand or respond yeah. when you say the word Argenvost. Yeah, you did tell us earlier that you didn't know who that was, so... Hmm. Um... Yeah. Skoka just backs back up into uh, the crowd. Are you, are you familiar with Baba La Sega? He nods he no again. No. Oh, hmm, right. I, I have a question for you. You said you put a stop to it. The, the evil that had come to your land, you would put a stop to it. How? Her name was Marina. A simple commoner. But Strad saw something in her. They say that she looked and acted like his long-lost love, Tatiana. So he took her mind and her blood. He would have made her undead as he is. But Brother Grigor and I performed a ritual, saving her soul from him, denying his love to grow. Okay, so and in his fury, he destroyed my village and all those that lived here. He spoils in between two worlds for his pleasure. Even to torment me more, he built a monument to Marina. He did over there. Where? And you see him point. We must. We must go look at least. Perhaps there are some other clues. And you see that he's pointing I... west, away from the um, the ruins. I, I'm very sorry for your suffering. Shall we go have a look? Go away! I beseech you, be gone. We'll be on our way. We are grateful for your time. Where will we go? We hope you one day find your rest. Yes. Cool, so... Leave. Leave now. We're, we're going. We're going. We're going. And I, I'll just walk, uh, I just walk away. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll walk away. Just go. Before, just go. And as you as you no, leave the immediate as you leave the immediate area, 
as you look back over your shoulder, he fades away. And with that, we're going to take a break. Oh, man. Thank you, everyone, for watching.
Welcome to Dwarven Forge. This is everything you need to know about our terrain in 60 seconds. Ready? Let's go. We hand sculpt our pieces for maximum detail and artistry, infusing passion into every millimeter of our work. Everything is available beautifully hand painted so you can start playing right away. Or you can choose unpainted to paint everything yourself. Our pieces are completely modular so you can use the same sets to create a new adventure every time. Most pieces have embedded anchor magnets that affix to our terrain trays for secure building and for revealing rooms as your players discover them. We create everything out of Dwarvenite, our top secret PVC formula that's nearly indestructible. We pack our pieces with as many features as possible, such as swappable LEDs to quickly change the look of your scene. We offer magnetic accessories to add flavor or increase the danger. A one-inch tactical grid is sculpted into our floors, hidden in dungeon flagstones, natural rocks, or sticks and plants. In addition to sculpted pieces, we make terrain trays to use as a vibrant graphic base for your build. We offer a range of environments, including dungeons, caverns, cities, castles, sewers, forests, mountains, streets, burrows, ice, and hellscape. And that's just the beginning. We have a passionate fan base who can tell you all about it. And that's everything you need to know about Dwarven Forge in 60 seconds. The games we play are the stories we create. The fortress doors swing open. Every story is unique. And the sound of war drums rises. Sometimes our stories come to us when we least expect them. We need to be ready no matter where inspiration strikes. And sometimes our stories are told over great distances. No matter where your journey leads you or how your story is told. The games we play are the stories we create. Sirenscape can help make yours epic. Sirenscape is searchable, fast, and customizable from any device with no need to pre-install any sound. Adding epic atmosphere to your game has never been easier.
Welcome, Welcome back. Everybody. All right. Um, and just so you all know, um, our some of our Discord community um, were led by our Tailweavers, who are the community DMs um, at a certain tier. They ran, uh, as we talked about before, little missions, little quests into the uh, into the swamps of Berez in order to clear some of those scarecrows. So there were actually less scarecrows than you would have dealt with otherwise, thanks to the community and the Vistani who were able to do that. So what? they're um, saving our butts all over the super place. Cool, right? They sure are. All right. Much appreciated. <laughs> mm. I mean, I would have been fine, but yeah, I'm sure they appreciate it. <laughs> Yeah, we'd have been dead. All right. Like you. Oh. You cross the expanse of the swamp in the direction that the Burgomaster um, showed you. Um, you move some two, three hundred feet as you walk. Um, nothing there, and just open swamp some of the same that you've seen, it all kind of starts to blend after some time. Before we get there, as we're walking, um, Godfrey speaks up. This may sound antagonistic, but do you stop everything you do to help each person you find, or what is your purpose, I ask. We have made a habit of helping people. We have not helped everyone, no. Most, I, I would like to think we have. I believe our quest is one and the same, that we want to free Barovia from this menace that is Strahd. We want the sun to rise again. That is the reason we've been given the name Dawnbringers. Yes, and part of it is, is because we really uh, don't <laughs> know what we're doing a lot of the time, so... Uh, we find that asking people what they might know might help us. So that is why. Yes, it may be that um, this quick trek to the monument is fruitless towards our current endeavor. We may need to come back, but we don't know that yet. Mr. Sir Godfrey, with a land full of so many enemies, it's good to make allies wherever we can. And that's why we help wherever we can. Sometimes things go very poorly, like the time that Dimitri blew up uh, Esmeralda's home and all of her belongings. That was really sad. But, but there are other times when uh, we really do help other people. But there is that one special time when we did not, and it was terrifying for everyone involved. All of her stuff was just destroyed. every everything was gone. Uh, okay. Was, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was Dimitri, too. That's the worst part. Yes. The point so that is... Mentioned. That was mentioned, yes. The point is... There are so many in this land that feel alone and hopeless. And if there's... Any sort of hope that we can bring to anyone. And if there are any allies we can make along the way. It is only one step closer to our goal. And the one bit of happiness almost in such a desolate place. Sometimes that's all we have to hold on to. Very well. I do ask that you remember this as you go forward. Speaking from experience, 
you will fail more than you will succeed. But the right things, you will succeed. And you'll continue walking. And as you speak to Godfrey, uh, Falfer, God, Godfrey turns and leaves, and behind him, some 200 feet in the fog, you see the fog kind of separate, and you see the visage of the hag, Morgantha, standing in the distance. Um, who, Dimitri's walking beside me, right? I think, yeah. something like that. I'll just uh, tap on his chest and point in the direction and ask, do you see that? Does he? Uh, I'll look over. Perception check, perception. Dimitri. Um, 14. Nothing. And as you look back over Falfer, she's gone. Ah, she was she right what? Who? Uh, Mor- Mor- Morgan, Mor- Morgantha, Morgenthal, Mar- 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 And as you say her name, you feel almost like nails lightly yeah. run down the back of your neck. No, I don't. <laughs> I uh, I shrug it off like, no. And I, uh, she's not here. She's not here. She's not here. She's not here. She is not here. Uh, are, are you seeing things, Flarfer? Nope. She's not here. She's not here. She's gonna keep walking. She's not here. Keep mm. walking. Are you getting enough sleep these days? I'm sure. I'm, I'm sure. I'm, I'm sure. I'm fine. She's not here right now, so everything's great. Hmm. Let me know if you seem to see her again. Yes, of course. I've, <laughs> I'm just. <laughs> I must be imagining things. It's. It's fine. It will be fine. I'm fine. Uh, do I, so, ah, crap, Jay, I hate this stupid hag. Um, all right, I'm going to do whatever I can to stay awake. What time of the day is it? Um, you guys, oh, that's a great question. Um, what time did you guys arrive? You left in, I'd have to go back. I don't remember offhand. I want to say it's early afternoon. Yeah, I want to say yeah. it's we early. left. We left early morning for sure. Yeah, mm-hmm. so, um, I, I'd say it's mid mid afternoon. I th- and it was a number of hours to get uh, to get yeah. here back from the camp. Four or five hours, I think I said. So we're gonna say it's the equivalent of about four or five in the afternoon. In fact, you're all getting okay. hungry, and you just had battles, so you're feeling. How close to sundown would you say we are? A couple hours, two or three hours. All right, so we wouldn't be able to make it back to. A safe place necessarily before dark. No. Okay. Argonvost isn't far. Okay. But uh, we must find a place to stay overnight. If you look at the map here, uh, Berez is down on the left there. Argonvost is just up from there. Hmm. Okay. I'll uh, I'll walk ever. So uh, just slightly closer to Dimitri than is probably comfortable for him. Okay. Um, just kind of in the you shadow. You're literally of, carried of... in a baby Bjorn. <laughs> I, I know, but I'm How close. How close Sterling... is too close? <laughs> Sterling's a robot. Dimitri's a, a good-looking man, you know? It's just <laughs> there. I... <laughs> so, yeah. There's people in me, too. It's not all robot. Well, <laughs> I can't tell that. Uh <laughs> I'm a real uh, boy. So yeah, <laughs> I'm a real boy. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I'll just uh, I'll walk in the shadow of Dimitri's thigh. Put it that way. Okay. All right. As you continue on, uh, eventually another hundred feet or so, hidden by the fog and elevated a few feet above the surrounding marsh, is a raised plot of land, barely ten feet on a side. Enclosed by a disintegrating iron fence, in the center of the plot is a life-sized stone monument carved in the likeness of a kneeling peasant girl clutching a rose. 
Although her features are gray and weather-worn, she bears a striking resemblance to Irina Kolyana. Carved into the monument's base is an epitaph. The epitaph reads as follows, Marina taken by the mists. Mm. Marina, I just met a girl named Marina. Hmm. I, I don't know what, what we can really do here. I don't know if this really gets us any closer to Baba La Saga or, or the Skull of Argonvors. Uh, well, what do you all make of this? A painful moment in Strahd's history. Being here, I don't know if it helps us, but maybe... Maybe it gives us some bit of an image into who he is and what made him the monster that he is. Just hmm. think of the reaction that... that he made after Irina, and the reaction that he made to this like an angry child throwing temper tantrums. You spoil. Thinks he can take whatever he wants. It's clear Irina wasn't the first to... No. With the, uh, there With is the barely. victim. There is also that weird... constructed ragdoll lady. Yes, and the man in the in between worlds with his entrails spoiled all over the place. It's like Estrad cares not for for life, not even one bit. With the booming voice of Sterling, the goat kind of closes in closer to you, Muskoka, and you can feel it brush against your leg. <laughs> okay, so now both Dimitri and Muskoka have a little uh, thing. <laughs> Um, so, can we keep going and trying to find the skull then? It's starting to get dark. While we're here, he's going to look at this monument, this thing. Um, not really find much that he personally cares for, but he is just going to watch for a second and then he's going to close his eyes. Give me a history check, Megan. Okay. Am I proficient? Yes. Okay. Hey, I'm doing this for us for later. <laughs> uh, 17. Okay. Um, as you close your eyes, you, you look at the visage of this, of this statue, and as you close your eyes, um, this statue bears a striking resemblance to Tatiana who was Strahd's love, or the one that he loved, who married his brother. He has a history of loving things that he does not own, or loving things and thinks he owns them because he loves them. It appears that history attempted to repeat itself. Can I uh, just kneel down and take a really close look at this monument? Yeah. What are you trying to get from? Um, just to see if there's anything else about it, anything that, anything else that's written there or anything that would be sort of different about it. Uh, investigation check. 19. Um, yeah, so you start to kind of look around. You do notice, though, that there is a stone that seems like it is out of place in the front of the monument, just at the base below where she's holding the rose. Where? What? What do you want to make of that? And I'll I'll point directly at it. 
looks a little out of place. Should we old, old should yeah, try and touch it? I don't know. Apart, don't you think it's old? No, this one specifically. It's it's a little do askew. Any of us, do any of us see it, Jay? Yeah, you can all see as he starts to point it out. It almost appears like it's been moved and and replaced. Just right. be careful. Check for traps. I back up. Uh, yeah. So I'll, I'll step I'll, forward. <laughs> I'll check it for traps, but um, knowing that I make a very good shield, <laughs> I'm thinking I'll be the one to pick it up. <laughs> okay. Uh, I basically I mean, look like one of those guys in a bomb defusal suit. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's me, Jeremy Renner. Yeah. Um, so I'm I can't do a very I, good... I'm just ready a firebolt <laughs> in case anything. Okay. Investigation check, Sterling. All right. This is, I mean, I get a plus zero on that. Ten. Nothing that you can see. Mundane rock. All right. I'm going to pick it up. Okay, so it's almost uh, like a, a shield. My shield in one hand, and <laughs> so it's almost like a block, um, okay. as part of kind of the, the the base of it. And as you move it out, there seems to be a little bit of an alcove inside, a little space inside that goes in under, and maybe like four inches tall, maybe six inches across. Man, I, I is really it like... a really deep hole or is it just like <laughs> it's dark inside you can't see like you'd have to you if you get down I'm assuming you look inside it goes about a foot back and there is something inside on the ground um, and it appears to be the shape of a rose what Gosh. what do you see? Um, yes, darling. What's earth. in there? It's an alcove with a rose. Take a look for yourselves. And I'll step back so everyone can see. I, I do take a closer look. Same thing. You see that there's a rose. Um, give me a um, investigation check, Esmeralda, as you take a closer look. Mm-hmm. Doesn't Strahd like roses? Isn't that one of his things? 21. The 21, you can see from the distance that you get, you get really close and you can see that it's a perfect rose. Um, And it doesn't seem to be natural. Um, It gleams and glistens, almost like it's a rose made of glass. The top of it black, onyx. I'm gonna pick it up. Okay, you reach inside and you grab it, you take it out and it is, um, the, 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 the petals are made of a black onyx glass, and the stem is made of uh, a, a dark metal with thorns and two leaves that come off it in the shape of a perfect rose. It's, it's beautiful, no? It's quite, it's quite pretty, but... Then from around rose. you, you start to hear a disturbance surrounding the area. In the what distance, kind of disturbance? <laughs> you start to hear what sounds like a. And you hear a number of voices in the distance through the fog, though you see nothing. Well, should you put it back? I'm going to use divine sense. Um. Just if there's any celestial fiend or undead within 60 feet. Yep. And as you close your eyes and you focus, you open them back up. um, And you see that there are seven undead creatures closing in on your location. There's seven of them. How long has it... How far away are they? Can I turn around and see? Can I see them if I turn around? Uh, the fog right now is obscuring them from your vision. Only Dimitri can sense them. Go ahead, Omega. 
I was saying it's been way past ten minutes since we fought in the thing, correct? In yeah. that area. Yeah. Thank you. Um. So, so Dimitri's the only one who senses them, but he just said there are seven of them around us, or something like that. Yeah. What'd you say, Dimitri? Uh, seven of them, and they're getting closer. And we're surrounded, right? Yeah, from all directions. Seven in all directions. Draw your weapons. Oh, how far are they? Can you tell? Very close. Esmeralda, perhaps... More specific? Must be at least 60 feet. Perhaps and in this area, Esmeralda. as you guys look around, you see that the, the mist has thickened and basically to an area that undulates of about 15, 20, 30 feet. But past that, the mist is quite, quite thick. Esmeralda, the rose, let's put it back in the hole. Uh, do you think that just by putting this back, they're gonna go away now? I, I don't know, I just mean, perhaps, maybe, they came because there or something triggered them to come. Perhaps it was five I... individuals, six individuals walking to an open area, making noise. Go. Can I just cast Magic Circle? around yeah it takes uh it takes quick. an hour though does it not or 10 minutes ah uh, it takes an hour to cast oh no it takes a minute to cast a minute yeah so you can start to can cast I hold it. An hour. can i hold an I action uh, yep. mr dm what's that i'd like to hold an action yep. a ready an action at ready this an point. action yeah um when i see a dead an undead within 20 feet of me i'm going to channel divinity and turn undead Anyone else? Yeah, I'll, I'll hold an action to fire on them um, if I see them, because we don't see them yet, right? No. Okay. Yeah, so, I'll do the same, Jay. I'll hold two two shots. Okay. Yeah, same. And I'll I'll have my sword drawn, and if any get close enough for me to reach with the sword, I'll attack it. Okay. And how far away did you say they were? Within sixty feet. He said. Okay. As you watch. Is this a traditional zombie, like how they move? Or is this a walking dead zombie? Like, are they moving faster? Well, he doesn't know. He just sensed that there was undead. He didn't know what kind. Because uh, you don't actually World see where they are. You just sense that they're there, right, Adam? Um, yes. Yeah. And then the, the location. Yeah. Um, and as you watch a corpse shambles in to kind of the circumference of where the the mist is open, kind of the clearing. And as it shambles in, you see a distended corpse, bloated, swamp water oozing from holes and gaps as it as it closes in. Um, who, uh, ranged attacks that were readied? Yes, two. Go ahead, Falfer. Cool. Um, so that will be a... Uh, I'd say you're about halfway through that magic circle, Esmeralda. Okay. Uh, no natural one, so I'm gonna roll that again. Um, <laughs> So, 10 on the first, 24 on the second. Okay. Um, both of them hit. Wow. And they just right through it, almost like through butter. And um, the the corpse, the first one goes kind of through its chest and out through, and it kind of shambles like this. The second one goes through its stomach. And as it goes through its stomach, it starts to rip and open, and you watch as po uh, snakes begin to fall out of its stomach dozens as they fall onto the ground and they start to move in your direction. I'd like you all to roll initiative. <laughs> Wait, are we also fighting the snakes, Jay? What's that? Well, they're are they're we slithering in your direction. <laughs> I will leave that up to you. Do, do I get my, should I take my attack? Uh, it, it, was it a ranged attack? Yeah, it was crossbow. Yep, go ahead. Uh, Sorry, uh, with those two bolts, 
um, that corpse fell to the ground, motionless. Okay. okay. So you can you you can f- uh, shoot at the snakes if you want. Sure. Uh, it's a nine and a thirteen to hit. Uh, those hit. Okay, so it's a ten and eleven magical damage. sex sorry okay <laughs> with that <laughs> you uh, sorry there was a t- two attacks or one attack there's two attacks right there was two yeah you take out two of the snakes and basically skewer them into the ground as they w- wriggle and then stop okay but there's more like yeah a lot more yeah there was at least half a dozen that came out of this out of this corpse this is super fun, guys. Yeah, it's super fun. There's only four left. Half a dozen is six, so there's four left. Yeah. We're good. Okay. Um, there's at least half a dozen. That could be thousands. <laughs> Give me one sec. I don't even know what to say to that. Yeah. <laughs> what if it's half a dozen thousand, man? That's like 6,000. Yeah. Six thousand or one, half a dozen, dozen of the other. I mean, half a dozen thousand. <laughs> of the other. Y'all need math and science, is what I'm saying. Could be a baker's dozen thousand, guys. <laughs> okay, yes. <laughs> Thirteen thousand. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just setting it, setting up the encounter in D and D Beyond. Give me one sec. Okay. All I hear in my mind is Harrison Ford saying, "I hate snakes." Why did it have to be snakes? Why does it have to be snakes? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It belongs in a museum. So <laughs> that's you. what I say about this rose. All right, Sterling. Yeah. <laughs> that's seven. Dimitri. Thirty-one. So it's not a natural one. Mm, Falfer. Which... Twenty-six. Do you have a negative to your dex? Yeah, nope. he does. Muskoka. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Sixteen. But you chose to come on the show, Godfrey. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Esmeralda. I rolled a five. And Sir Godfrey. Fifteen. Fifteen. Very nice. All right. Okay, uh, Falfer, um, you had a readied action. Um, the snakes fell. Falfer, you're up. Muskoka, you're on deck. Okay, so I'm going to, with my Dread Ambusher feature, special other, whatever it's called, um, uh, do a uh, an extra D8 on an extra attack. So just so you know, three attacks this round. Okay. Um, that will be uh, two with my hand crossbow. And uh, yeah, so I'll do those. One, two, three, so that's, that's 19 to hit. That's oh, a hit. natural 20 on the second hit. Woo! And uh, is reloading an action, Jay? Um, shoot. Uh, we, re- we went through this. And I can't remember. A long time ago. Yeah, a you, long you time ago. You took that feat, though. Didn't that make it so it's like a yes, free action? That's right. I have the yeah. feat for reloading. Yeah. So I'm going to do another attack. Okay. Um, and that one, wow. I'm rolling like fire, 25. So that's 19, 28, and 25 to hit. Okay, those are all hits. And the second one is a double. Um, so that will be um, seven, nine, and five. So that's 16, 21, plus a D8. Sorry. Give me a D8. Uh, oh, eight. Yay. So all told, that is 29 points Ooh. of damage. Very nice. With impeccable ranger accuracy, with your bolt, you manage to skewer the rest of the snakes, um, timing your shots so that they hit multiple ones as that finishes. As you finish that, silence currently, no other... Um, Zombies are entering the area. Muskoka, you're up. Sir Godfrey, you're on deck. Uh, yeah, Muskoka does a little math in his head and decides that the uh, other zombies are full of snakes. 
Uh, there's it's it's like a fenced area around this grave. Yeah, there's an iron fence, d d dilapidated, iron? broken iron fence. That's not gonna be fun to try to sit on. Um. Okay, I'm <laughs> I'm gonna uh, I can gonna continue to hold my action. Um, that once once they're within twenty feet, I will use channel divinity and turn undead. Okay, Sir Godfrey. I hold my action. Uh, my sword is on the side. Well, I'm holding it to the side. Um, and if something comes, I will strike. Okay. All right. At that moment, the other six zombies stumble in. Again, same thing, distended, um, different heights, females, males, all different types are now in closing in as they enter the area. Those with ready to tax at close range, you can take them now. Godfrey. Right. So, um, my first one is a dirty 20. Nice. For uh, 10 slashing. And the second attack is a 26. For 13 slashing. Yeah. You cleave this zombie in half as it splits and snakes, same thing, spill out from inside it and begin to char to, to wriggle towards you. Um, uh, I, uh, my first attack was a 13. The second was a 15. Uh, 15 hits. 15 hits. Uh, uh, 15 points of slashing damage. Okay. And same thing. You open up its belly, snakes fall out. I'm uh, begin hissing. Um, at this point, um, it is their turn. Are they within 20 feet? Uh, yeah, those two would be within 20 feet. I'm assuming you're all kind of... Uh, packed together? Yeah, in a circle yeah. around the monument. So once they're within 20 feet, then, then I'll use my turn undead. Okay, go ahead. So any within 30 feet yeah. must make a wisdom saving throw, a DC of 15. Uh, if it fails, it's destroyed. Uh, if it's under half, if it's under half CR. And also, point of clarity, um, Muskoka went before Godfrey. Yeah. So his turn undead would have went off before I attacked. Mm -hmm. Yep. Sure would have. But it's under half. Uh, it has to be under half a half a uh, challenge rating. Yeah. In order to be destroyed. Okay. If they're over that, yeah. then they will spend their turn. Uh, well, spend uh, one minute. Um, if the creature fails its saving throw, it is turned for a minute or in take, until it takes damage. Uh, turn creature must spend its turns moving as far away from you as it can, and it can't move willingly to a space within 30 feet. Also can't take reactions. Okay, so three of the zombies begin to turn and walk away. Um, none of them are destroyed. Uh, so two of them can, t can t uh, sorry, there was, there were seven, you killed three. So yeah, so three turn and one continues in. Godfrey, I'd like you to also make that saving throw. No. No? I'm resistant to turn undead. Oh, very nice. <laughs> yeah, I definitely feel it and I go, I still don't like Oh, that. that's right, that's right. I, I turn around, oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean anything. <laughs> you know, like when you like, like really random um, right. um, um, connection. You know, like when you're sitting on a certain thing doing your business and then your feet start to get like pins and needles and shit for yeah. a while? <laughs> yeah. That's what, turn, that's what it feels like to him. He yeah. doesn't like it. <laughs> He's like, this is not a good feeling. <laughs> I like it. I like it. <laughs> um, one of them, the, the last one that, that, that stumbles in um, goes to attack Esmeralda. Uh, and it swings wide. These are very slow. Um, and you very easily sidestep it. 
Sterling, you're up. Esmeralda, you're on deck. Are there a lot of snakes on the ground right now? There's two swarms. Okay. And how close are they? Are they within melee range? Um, one of them can be, yes. All right. Uh, then I'm going to um, stow the, the shield and the weapons. I'm going to pop the claws, and I'm going to just kind of go for amount of attacks rather than high damage. Okay. Uh, but it did 18, 15, 9, and 18 to hit. 18, 15, 9, and 15. 9 doesn't hit. Okay, but the but the 18s and 15 do. Yep. Okay, so that's uh, 3, 5, and 6 damage on those attacks. Uh, total of 14. Okay. Yeah, and there's silvered claws, the badger and the bear. Yeah, and you managed to... Stabbing at the ground. You managed to work your way through at least half of that swarm. Okay. Okay. As a Merelda, you're up. Dimitri on deck. Uh, am I still trying to cast the spell? It's up to you. I mean, how much time has passed? Have I have I succeeded? So I, I said it was halfway through, so you were 30 seconds in. Uh, it has been 36 seconds now. I'll, I'll keep casting. Okay. Falfer, you're up. It's Muskoka, you're on deck. Okay. So Sorry, I Dimitri, will... you're up. Falfer, you're up. Sorry, Dimitri's up. Falfer, you're on deck. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Then the, uh, the new... A uh, bunch of snakes that just built up. I'm just gonna keep whacking at it with my uh, long sword. Okay. It's an 18 to hit for the first one. Hit. Which does 12 slashing. Okay. And the second attack is a natural one. Oh. <laughs> um, as you come down on on the ground, uh, the your long sword gets stuck in the ground and one of the snakes begin to climb the sword up towards your arm. Falfa, you're up. Muskoka, okay. you're on deck. So how is Dimitri's sword in the ground right now, Jay? It's stuck in the ground. Like he came down and okay. it, it got stuck in the Did dirt. Did I notice this at all? Yeah. Okay. So I'll, uh, I'll, oh, I want to do something cool. Um, if, if I notice, I'm going to take my first shot off. Yep. Before I head over to Dimitri and try to like kick his sword sideways out of the ground for him. Okay. So yeah, so I'm gonna take that first attack. Um, cross, hand crossbow again. Natural ones don't count for me, so I will roll again. Um, and that is a, hello, D&D Beyond. What's that? Plus eight, 15. that's a seven, 15 to hit, yeah. Y'all see it? <laughs> I didn't see it on my screen. So, does 15 hit? Yep. Cool. So that is nine damage. Okay. And that's the. And you managed to finish off that one the, group of snakes. Yeah, the first group of snakes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And they're they're done. Um, and as you head over, it is an action to help. So you yep. you head over to, to to help on your next action. Muskoka, okay. you're up. Sir Godfrey, you're on deck. <clears throat> So just, uh, I'd like to, um, th th there's only one zombie, right? And like everybody's just kind of- One full zombie and there's one uh, swarm of snakes on the ground attacking. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna say that those, those ones that turned, I, I thought I would kill them, but it, they'll be back. They'll be back in a minute, so be ready. And I'm going to, can I, 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 wanna, I wanna collect Falfer's crossbows or his, his bolts for him from the ground. Okay. But I, I guess you won't let me try to stomp on snakes while I do that, would you? No. <laughs> okay, I'd like to walk towards them. Can, can I stomp on a couple snakes on the way? Can I only make one attack? Like, is is, is stomping on a snake one action? Yes, and it's an attack the action. the most glorious spell is also an action, Yes. Right? So... <sighs> okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna run towards one of the snakes and I want to double foot jump and try to stomp on it. Okay, that's an unarmed strike on a, on a swarm of snakes. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's going to be a 13 to hit. <laughs> that is a miss. As you go to stomp, they <laughs> out of the way and <laughs> you double foot stomp in the middle of a... <laughs> oh my gosh. Hey, does the goat get, a, get an attack? Uh, I will allow you... Yes. Yes, the goat absolutely get gets an attack. Skilled. What? <laughs> That is a good point. The what? goat is going to try and ram some snakes. 
and it missed. Oh, good. Ah. Just, just me right. and Noggins just punching the ground. <laughs> <laughs> just, he's headbutting the ground. You're yeah. just stomping. <laughs> That's great. All right. Uh... Sir Godfrey, you're up. Um, so there's a f ton of um, sw uh, sneaky swarms around. Basically. There's there's one one swarm that these guys are trying to stomp on. Uh, once. <laughs> okay. <sighs> and one zombie that is standing still. Oh, That's like a zombie. Lazily attacking, trying to attack Esmeralda, but missing oh, and failing. Oh, cool. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll I'll go after her. Okay. Uh, I'll go after the, the, that one. Cause, no, he was about to get stayed there and do nothing. Um, uh, yeah, I'll go after that one after he shakes his head at the the goat thing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> great. Yeah, this is a, this is a 22 to hit. 22 to hit. It is a hit. Uh, yeah, great. And based... Oh, Jesus, shit. Uh, based off of what I know is probably going to happen... Um, well, first off, that was six points of damage with two natural ones on those dice. Oh gosh! Uh, is the is the is the zombie still up as a zombie? No, it falls apart and, and snakes pour out of its belly. Great! And then after that, with the second attack, I'll kind of lob off some okay. of their hit. Um, that was horrible. That definitely hits. Um, to twenty-four to hit. Yeah. Um. Okay. Uh, that is very nice, actually. That is 22 points of slashing damage. Ooh, and you work your way through most of that swarm. Muskoka, you're a little jealous. I don't understand why we're fighting these things. And Dave, I would some goat stats, and you can control your goat in your turn. Oh. The goat, not Get your goat. The goat, goat stats. <laughs> Hashtag goat stats. <laughs> Hashtag goat stats. That <laughs> greatest of all um, time. That swarm uh, is going to attack uh, you, Muskoka. What? With a 15. Does a 15 hit? Hey, can I? When he left my area during the stomp, did I get an attack of opportunity? No. Uh, <laughs> do you. <laughs> does a 15 hit? Uh, uh, no. Okay. All right. Uh, and this other swarm is going to now attack Godfrey. Hit me! That is a 21. And it's... That's going to be 7 piercing damage. Mm-hmm. And that's it. Does this particular goat have horns, Jay? Yes. I just wanted to know what yeah. it does. Yeah, cute little what horns. Does. Yep. Okay. Bah. Trying to get Sterling, it. you're up. Esmeralda, you're on deck. All right, we still have a lot of snakes on the ground, right? Like even more than before. Well, there's half, like half a, uh, there's a full swarm and half a swarm. All right, um, but there's a bunch of people crowded around one of those swarms, right? So Muskoka and the goat are trying to kill one swarm that are still at full strength, and Godfrey okay. just decimated most of one swarm. All right, okay. Um, I'll I'll go step beside uh, Muskoka, and I'm gonna help in this whole you'll, ground pound you'll situation. You'll go step aside. Is that what you said? Yeah, with the with the claws, I'm gonna go Wolverine on this yeah. and snickety snick. Yeah. And my uh, goat? I'm not controlling the goat. I'm standing beside <laughs> the goat. I could I could stand over top of the goat. <laughs> Is there space for me to fit around this? <laughs> yes. Okay. Excellent. So. Um, What's going on? My attacks were 11, 7, 13, and 14. What am I trying to beat? Let's. 14 hits. 14 hits. Okay, that's four damage. Silvered. Stabby. Okay. All right, you kill a snake. Yes! Yes! <laughs> uh, I'm burning my keep, guys. Esmeralda, you're up. Dimitri on deck. Am I, am I still casting or have I cast? You're still casting. That is another round of casting. That's another six seconds. Gone. I got to commit at this point. I, I like it. Yeah. Dimitri, you're up. You're 42 also... seconds in, just for the record. All right. I'm swinging at the snakes. And uh, that's a hit. First attack is a 19 to hit. And it does 11 damage. 
Second attack is a 16 to hit. Yep. So sorry, with that 11, you finish off the swarm that were you sorry, which which when you were you attacking? Um I'm not sure. Okay, you finish off the one that Godfrey was attacking. Okay. And then so you can head over and attack with your second attack, you can attack Muskoka Swarm if you want. Okay. Yeah. And the a second attack does nine slashing damage. Okay. And that one's about halfway through. Okay. File for your say, Thank you, Falcon. Muskoka, you're on deck. Falfrey, you're up. Muskoka, you're on deck. Oh, sorry. I didn't hear my name. Yep. Um, so, yes, I will, again, try to attack the snakes two crossbows at a time, two bolts at a time. Okay. So that is natural 20. Again, wow, d, &D Beyond, I'm starting to like you as wow. a service, but now... Um, that we love was... d, d Beyond. We yes. love d, &D Beyond. Okay. We love, love d, d Beyond, except for sometimes. Um, so... Um, <laughs> I That's what makes it fair, sponsors. <laughs> so yeah. Joel's then... our Sam Regal. <laughs> uh, 25, sorry, 28 and 15 to hit. Those okay. are hits. And then um, nine damage on the first one and uh, six damage on the second. That's with your natural 20? Oh, yes. Was the first one a natural 20? Second yes. one was natural 20, yes. You finish off that final swarm, and it goes silent. Exact. Again. I, I turn to Sterling and, and go, uh, like with a with a nudge. Yes, thanks for earning your keep. And you can see that the mist starts to recede slightly. How long does Turn Undead last, Skoka? Good question. Not long. I think it's only like a minute. Yeah, I think so too. But I, yeah, so for, for a minute, they would have been running as far away as their okay. kind of dead I, legs. I really take thought, I really thought there was another thing coming. Because if there's one thing I've learned, it's, it's swarms and things lead to like one other big worse thing. Uh, they perhaps. are going to come back soon. Yeah, yes, perhaps. perhaps we should go straight back to the manor and maybe deliver this flower, whatever it means. That's a great idea. I agree with Dimitri. Yeah, I really don't want to put this thing back in the ground. It's really pretty. I'm kind of afraid of it, not to, uh, you know, just saying. What, what say you, Sir Godfrey? If you have... A goal that requires the pleasing of that entity. As long as it does not take us away from the bigger goal at hand, that is fine with me. Mm. Yes, but you're right. Eyes on the prize. You're right. Out of curiosity, mm. is Magic Circle still being cast? Uh, mm. listen, I have to commit, so why not? Will it, will, will it be active at this point? Yep. Actually, I have, a, I have a sound effect for that. Active. Mm. You see Godfrey stare at you. What did you just do? I I just wanted to protect us. I tried to get out of that circle because I am very uncomfortable as an undead who is affected by said circle. And how are you affected it... by said circle? It targets undead, doesn't it? Uh, no, not necessarily. It just says, uh, it says, hold on. I thought you were doing it with undead. I was like, I was thinking about it when you cast it. I was like, ooh, Godfrey, not gonna like that. Uh, following types of creatures, celestial, elemental, friends. I guess I would have to choose one. 
which would have to mean does it say your yes, choice on yeah so but, one, choose one of the following types and you would have chosen mm. undead and what effect does it but have but if, it says you can't enter it but what if you're already inside of it you just have to, you don't take damage you just have like disadvantage on attack rolls Oh yeah, I just said hurt him. He just okay. like the he, just, yeah. he steps out. He's like Yeah, I was just like, uh oh, listen, no offense. I just you know <laughs> I don't know if you have a particular hatred for undead. No. I am noticing this group likes to pick on us. It's not a hatred. It is a precaution. Because, uh, to be fair, to be fair, most of the undead, literally everyone except for you so far, has tried to kill us. I am and not it does right not, now. it does not uh, affect our judgment of you whatsoever, because we've, we've grown very fond of you, if I could, if I could speak for everyone. Uh, mm, however... You have to admit that a lot, you know, a lot of the things around the, this, these parts have been undead that trying to attack us. I would love a warning when I will be, when a tingling sensation will be forced upon me. Is Listen, I, I, I accept that and I... You know, I, I respect that very much. Uh, I will say that nothing I have done will cause any harm to you if you are an ally. Yeah, I did try to kill the undead, but I really didn't think it would affect you. Um, it did Oversight on my part. I'll be more careful. Yes, we'll, we'll, we'll very much uh, try to look out for that. And I, didn't, I didn't mean any disrespect. It was just... The current environment and situation. You see Godfrey smile and then start to chuckle. It was more humorous than anything. Oh, <laughs> yes, I you didn't know that you had a way of humor. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, that makes me feel a little bit. Oh. <sighs> Am I sweating? Am I sweating? <laughs> It makes me feel a little you're bit. You're sweating a little, but you're Ooh. fighting too, so it's okay. <laughs> Dimitri, just over uh, Godfrey's shoulder, you see a little light dancing in the fog that seems to be getting closer and closer. It's that. Look. Look through the fog right there. If I... If I squint, can I make out, or is it just like a single light? As you kind of squint, you start to see a, a form, um, a familiar form, that of Muriel, the woman you spoke to earlier. And she kind of stumbles in, and she's breathing really heavy. She says, I, I think I found her. I saw her on the, just north of here, on the other side of the swamp. I can show you. Baba La Saga? Yes, her hut. I found it. Oh, well, then there's no time to waste. Hold on, my friends. Is it truly wise to attack her in her place of residence? She may have traps. She may have some uh, diabolical schemes. She's a hag. She will have things of power within her home, will she not? Well, you, you can answer that more than we could, Muriel. <sighs> she is very dangerous, but she moves all the time. I don't know if we wait. If she will still be there. That is the chance you take. I am taking a chance, being outside the circle, this deep. I never come this deep. Hmm. Right. I think we should... I think we should pounce on this opportunity. All right, we'll be prepared to burn our hut down, then. We're very good at that. Yes, we are. I saw what you did with those arrows, Valfair. Let's so I get my, uh, fire bolts ready in my hands. I just take a step yes. away from you. Come. <laughs> Not at you. It's fine. No. I, no, we had the thing. No. I, 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 I understand. Please come. We must not wait. Must not delay. Right. I will show that, you the way. Flower can wait. And she starts to kind of run ahead with her lantern. And I'm gonna 
after her. Can I can I take some some uh, clothes from my my bag quickly? I have traveler's clothes. I want to try to wrap the very fragile, delicate looking rose in some clothes. Yeah. And then I'll give it back to Esmeralda to put in her pack, like okay. kind of protected. Okay. Ah oh, yes, you, we you don't wanna... have bubble wrap in this land, so. No, it's no <laughs> much mud, magic than... bubble wrap. Mm. I have never heard of such a thing. I appreciate. Mm. I know what those words are separately. Agreed. <laughs> it's just conceptual. No, it's just we have a thing later. As you venture north through the swamp, eventually she stops and she says, Just ahead. I must not go. Be safe. And Muriel um, turns and she starts to scurry off. Can I tell if I believe her still? Insight check. I was truthfully going to ask the same thing because it felt very opportunistic. Um, 23. Yeah, you believe her. She seems terrified and convinced. I actually got pretty high, too. Uh, cool. Thank you, Mario. Um, so she's, she pointed to where the hut is? Yeah, in, the, in the direction of where she said the hut was. And right now, the fog is obscuring the, the direction that she pointed so we can't see the hut? Not from where you stand. And she already skedaddled. Does she look injured or anything before she goes? Nope, Does just she... scared, tired, worn. Kind of like the rest of us. <laughs> you right. do hear in the distance what sounds to be the squawking of ravens. And not just a couple, but a fair amount murder i have I, a murder i have a question when you cast magic circle as an action can you move where that circle is or is it just on that one spot forever i think it's in that one spot does the spell specify no it yeah, just says that you cast it at a spot on the ground yeah so i, I think it stays know if there you could move it yeah it stays well there. shit all right <laughs> <laughs> would have been nice what do you do it has some pretty expensive components for I you know, to right? to just protect the grave wasted it away <laughs> um <laughs> I'll be looking towards that area that we were uh, led to and I'll just say as I said this will not be easy I don't know her, but I understand that she is a powerful entity. Do not pull your punches, as I have heard the phrase be said. Right. Nice. We should, we should try not to be seen as we approach. Get the element of surprise on our side. Well, I, I'm hesitant to send a scout. That has not worked for us in the past. What do you mean by that? I take I take it personally because I see myself <laughs> as a scout. <laughs> it's not your fault. No, I mean what happened with Muskoka last time. I, I would not oh, have right. it happen again. Yeah, so, I prefer that that didn't happen as well. I would volunteer to go first, but I'm not the quietest of quietest among us with my I, large need, armor. Do you need a scout? I don't think anybody's going to get close to her without I, her knowing. I mean, I would I would volunteer to go invisibly and scout, but I have used that spell slot already, so... Muskoka, um, do you have the ability to cast that silence again in case we need it? Oh, yeah. It was so helpful with the first hags, and it, it may do the same here. Wow, she, is she, she's not a... She's not a hag, though. Oh, I thought she was described as one to us. Was a... she a hag? She was described yes. as one. Yeah? Oh, okay. I hate hags. Yeah. Yeah, I could do that. Uh, does anybody have a rope and a stake or something? I feel like I should tie up the goat so he doesn't keep following us. <laughs> but also, if I tie him up, he's probably going to get eaten by a zombie. 
So... I actually do have a wooden stake and some rope. <laughs> but I, I don't know. I, I really don't want to use a spell slot to tell him to go away. How, he's in Barovia. how smart is he? He doesn't seem super smart. He talks smart. to him. He told me he could smell well, but apparently he can't. He can't smell himself. I know that much. Can he scout? Well, I, I, how's he gonna? Hey, well, you can talk if he to can him. sit there and talk to you, he could definitely go over there and scout for a dangerous situation and come okay, back in the report. Hey, but Falfer can have a conversation with me, but he can't scout either. Yes, well, that's Falfer, but last of this goat. Okay, well, we've well, got to do something. An there. Put the goat <laughs> down, stake the rope so he stays. If he dies, he dies. But he will die if he, the goat that Baba Lasaga specifically captured, goes to her. Sounds good. Let's just remember to come back and get the stake and the, the rope again when we're done. I see nothing wrong in this play. Let's go. Okay. All right. So you tie up the I goat. Guess. Yeah, we tie <laughs> up the goat. In the middle of the foggy field of Barovia. Yes. yes you tie Go- up the goat. Goffrey to open nah. this. <laughs> <laughs> all I think to Falfer thinks to himself, all I can think of is steak. <laughs> and goat we steak. Move, And we move in. Okay. I'd like you all to give me stealth. Are you all moving together? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Sneaking like the Scooby Doo crew. Mm-hmm. I'm staying back a little. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna do that. Okay. <laughs> Fourteen on my stealth check, Jay. Okay. Fourteen as well for okay. me. Fifteen. Okay. It's a nine, including my disadvantage. Okay. Wow, we are so mediocre. It's, it's a just... two. <laughs> average. Okay. At disadvantage, it's a it's a seven. Okay. Decent average. As you approach through the fog, eventually the fog clears and you see that someone has built a ramshackle wooden cabin on the stump of what once was once an enormous tree. The rotting roots of the stump thrust up from the mire like the legs of a gigantic spider. An open doorway is visible on one side of the hut beneath which floats the upside-down, hollowed-out skull of a giant dragon. Flanking the hut's doorway are two iron cages that dangle like hideous ornaments from the eaves. Scores of ravens are trapped in each one. They squawk and flutter their wings excitedly as you approach. And through the swamp, coming from the hut you hear, <laughs> and that is where we're going to end the session for this evening. Ah, we got, we got five minutes, Jay. I know. <laughs> that leaves time for announcements. You got to free those friend ravens. Oh, friend ravens. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Cool. That was Not a lot happy. of fun. Omega, I haven't asked you how long you're going to be with us, but are you willing to be with us for as long as this takes? I guess. Uh, I ain't doing nothing on Monday, so whatever. I'm here. All this staking of goats. I know it's riveting, but... <laughs> we do love you, so please stay around as long please as you stay. can. Yes. Listen, listen, I sent the goat away, and Jay brought the goat back. What's going to happen is Godfrey's arc is going to be done, and I'll come back as Noggins, but he's a shapeshifter. Yeah. <laughs> and they need you, <laughs> frankly. Our other show. You're welcome. They need you. <laughs> the winner of tonight's giveaway for the pre-order of Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft is Kelly Preston. Congratulations, Kelly Preston. You will be uh, sent, or uh, if you can notify us, and we will send you that code, and you can enjoy that awesome thing for D&D Beyond. Thank you, Cast, for joining us again. Uh, this Thursday, we have Aftermath. It is your semi-spoilerific look, and chat with members of the cast uh, about this episode um, and the things that are coming up. We also have a really big announcement that I can't talk about that is coming up in the future. Um, some really new, awesome content we can't really talk about yet, but 
in the coming weeks and months, we will be announcing something big and we're very, very excited about it. Just a little bit of a thing. And again, everyone in this crazy, crazy time, um, consider those around you that are not doing okay, that are downtrodden, that seem like they're doing okay. If there's any inkling that they're not, reach out, love them because you never know who needs it. All right, you guys have a wonderful week. Take care of each other. We'll see you on Thursday and then next Monday. Bye, guys. Love you guys.